listening to CLNS Media, powered by BetOnline.ag. Go to clnsmedia.com slash roll. Use our promo code CLNS50 for 50% off your first deposit. Welcome to another episode of What's Wrong With Wrestling. I'm Andrew Pisano, along with Eric Slamilton Hamilton. Eric, pay-per-view prediction, Slamilton Hamilton. That's right. I am the king. I am the champ. And I will be retaining this Sunday at Stomping? Stomping Ground. Stomping yes. Ground. This might be worse than Saudi Mania. <laughs> Right. Like, at least you could laugh yeah. at, at Goldberg and Undertaker having a botch fest. True. Like, I just don't. There's these are it's, it's all pretty much. It's all Even rematches. the logo sucks. It's the boot. The logo sucks. And then it's stomping grounds. The logo is a boot. Clearly, it's building up Seth Rollins. And then the picture for the pay-per-view is Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns. <laughs> yeah. A guy who has nothing. Yeah. No titles. A match that means nothing. Another match that means nothing. A WrestleMania rematch. Yeah. From three months ago now? Yeah. Yikes. And then the other promos they're playing are these boots are made for walking with Becky Lynch and Lacey right? Evans, which is just so... Huh? Where they like don't quite sing. They just say... Yeah. And one of these days, these boots... <laughs> Are gonna walk all over you? Yeah, yeah. It's awful. So right, it's, it's awful. Yeah, especially if she's the man. Why is she singing a girl song? Yeah, you know? yeah. Come on, <laughs> get with the program. Yeah, man. They need that continuity person big time. Yes. Well, you got your your title on display there. I got my title on display. Good job. Good, Good job, job with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I had a fun weekend. I went to San Antonio. Um, yeah. Celebrity Fan Fest mm-hmm. is what they're calling it. All right. Uh, I went for wrestlers because three wrestlers were there. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Bryan, Finn Balor, and uh, Becky Lynch. Baller Club? Baller Club. Is he still in San Antonio? Because he wasn't on SmackDown this week. He, mu- he must have missed his flight. <laughs> Sucks to his be His flight. In. Yeah, right. I guess yeah. so. Or his demon portal, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever he takes. Uh, but yeah, it was it was fun. Um, I'm on the river walk. I yeah. got lost. You can get lost on the river walk. This river stinks, <laughs> and it does. You, no, you can get that's lost fun. on the river walk. You so can. that's probably what's going on. Yeah, remember that time we did a like a scavenger hunt on the river walk? <laughs> yeah, that was a nightmare. That was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, we were exhausted. We ran up and down the river. You know, I bet I bet the demons lost. That's yeah, probably and, what it you is. You know, and Balor's looking for him. What are you, demon? 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 Come out, demon! <laughs> yeah. You want to see my demon? So I was I was really excited to meet Balor, mainly because I wanted to bring up what we did in Brooklyn. Yeah. And I did ask him. I was like, hey, you know, uh, I don't know if you'll remember, but raw after WrestleMania, uh, there was a bar slash pizza place you came into with your family. I'm sure you hated the pizza as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's talk about that pizza and nothing else. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, like, as soon as I said my friends were... He stopped and he's like, the ones who played my music yeah. on the jukebox. Right. I was like, yes. He's like, I was like, I was so embarrassed. I didn't know how you're going to react. He's like, no, that was really funny. That's <laughs> never happened. That's awesome. So it's good to know he. there's no hard feelings about it months yeah. later now that he's stewed on it. Right. Well, you again, know? when we did it, he, it seemed like he lightened up. and Right. That's when he started smiling for pictures. Yeah. Not my brother's. Because before that, your brother and his girlfriend's picture... Not so much. Not so much. No he, smiles. He looked like he looked like he was about to bring out the demon. For a guy we call f- smiling Finn Balor on this show, right? He was no smiles. No. no. Yeah. Not so. until not until then. So, 
watch how I do this. So speaking of smiles, uh huh. I see there's a lot of new Patreons on that computer. Yes, yes, there is. <laughs> Like how I segued that? Uh huh. Yeah, all right. You ready to do this? Yeah. You reading them? I reading them? Who uh, reading them? I'll read them, I guess. Okay. All right. So thank you to Daniel Long, Kevin Sullivan. What? That's crazy. That's awesome. Uh, Nick Carullo, maybe? Cer- Cerullo? Maybe. Adam uh, Lanthier. Oh, I should have let you do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Phil Boto or Botto. Botto. Ryan Nichols, Chris Marsh, Will and Ruben suck balls. Yeah, right. they do. They, they certainly do. And that's why they put that, because they want someone to say something like that. Right. Carlos yeah. Martinez, Nick. Just Nick. David Simpson, GNU. Uh-huh. Adam Rose. Hey. It's nice of him. Maybe some of his rosebuds will join. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, well, they're, they're No Way Jose's conga people now. That's true. And then finally, we have Joshua Owen. So, all right. Thank you to those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Boom! New patrons. That's awesome. Go to patreon.com slash what's wrong with wrestling and sign up today. Join the club. The club. We have 580 patrons. Yeah. yeah. So uh, clearly we went- bandwagon marketing is the way to go. It is. So join the bandwagon. Five bucks gets you all the content. We wouldn't have that many people if the content was not good. It's such good shit. It's good. No, it's, it's not. It's not. <laughs> I got to learn the difference. It's not good shit. Yeah. It's not good shit. Right. It's, it's good shit. It's good shit. <laughs> it's good shit. It's really good shit. Yeah. And we'll be adding more soon. Uh, yes. We have another thing coming up. Yes, a new bracket coming. We do this month. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, maybe our best one. I'm very excited for it. Yeah, so it's going to be. If great. he's excited, I'm excited. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, we're going to get to Raw SmackDown. Do some predictions. Yeah. Unfortunately, Joe is out on assignment. Yes. Uh, don't know what that assignment is, but he's out. He's out there. He's out there doing the assignment. Yes. Maybe next week we'll find out what the assignment was. Yeah. We never found out what your assignment was. When you were gone, I don't like to. Uh, I don't like to get my business out. <laughs> I don't like to talk about my assignments. Yeah, I don't like to. My assignments are pretty personal, right? Yeah, yeah. They, as they should be. Right. All right. So Ross starts with Elias. Wild card. And that's it. That's all of Raw. Just wild card. I mean, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the first person you see is a wild card. Is a wild card. <laughs> right. <laughs> It sets the tone. Yes, it does. For sure. But he does start off strong by dissing Los Angeles. Earlier today, I talked to my friend Anthony Davis. And I said, Tony, why? Why would you want to move to Los Angeles? And he said, Elias, let's be real. I'm a piece of garbage. And I need to surround myself with other pieces of garbage. And the only way to do that is to move to a city where the people are more toxic than the air. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've you know. all had that conversation with our friend. We're like, why would you do that? Well, I'm a piece of garbage. Exactly. Yeah. I've yeah, been there. It's happened. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people online brought up the fact that it sounded similar to um, what... Dean Ambrose slash John Moxley was complaining about on the Jericho's podcast. Uh-huh. He was like mentioning when when he was in LA and you know Vince wanted him to talk about how the people are toxic and everything. And, right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it did sound a little similar. So Vince wrote Elias's promo for sure. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So then Elias takes off his jacket, revealing a referee shirt, and he says Corbin shows me to be the special referee at Stomping Grounds. But then Seth Rollins appears out of nowhere and smashes Elias with a chair. Chair shot out of nowhere? Yeah, it all was. Because, right. you know, it was all dark. There was only a spotlight. Yeah. So you, you couldn't really see Rollins until the chair shot happens. Uh, so that was cool. The lights come on. Seth hits him with the chair a few more times and says, if you align yourself with Baron Corbin, this is what awaits you on the other side. So choose wisely. And by the other side, he means SmackDown? Uh, yes. <laughs> Where he belongs? No, main event. Oh, <laughs> main event. You would go straight to main event. Yeah. So Seth leaves, but then out comes the Miz. And uh, as Elias starts getting up, Miz hits him with the skull-crushing finale. Then Bobby Lashley comes out and hits Elias with a spear. Then Cesaro comes out and gives Elias the big swing. 
Then Ricochet comes out and gives Elias a code breaker. Uh-huh. Uh, then Braun Strowman finally comes out last, and he gives Elias a running power slam. Um, but I thought this was a great segment to open the show. And then Triple H comes out <laughs> with a shovel. <laughs> because just box this guy up at this point. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, yeah, I get it, you know, but I thought it was really funny. It I did. was. It was it was really funny. Every time he starts getting up, someone else comes out and beats the fuck out of him. For no reason at all. We just have to accept this is a, what Elias is. This he is. He is a a human he gets, punching bag. He gets heat from the crowd so that he can get beat up. Right. He's basically one of the like WWF um, wrestling buddies. Like, you just do all your moves to him and <laughs> yeah. uh, th- call it a day. That's what you do all the crazy shit, you know, to, to one of the wrestling wrestler buddies that you don't care about. Yeah. So that when their head falls off, you're like, okay, well, it's just... You right, know. yeah. He's not even the wrestling buddy you like. Yeah. He's just the old one. When I was a kid, I had to get three Stone Cold action figures because the first two, his head fell off. Like I played with him. I get maybe because I, I played with him so much. Maybe because I played with him the most because he was my favorite Stone Cold. But like his right. head would fall off. Like oh man, and then I had to get another Stone Cold, and then his head fell off, and I had to get another Stone Cold. Like I can, I almost want to imagine you like playing. Like you have like a, a Stone Cold action figure, yeah, and a uh, like an Owen Hart one, yeah, and you're like trying to recreate the pile driver, and right. you do it, and you're like. <laughs> Oh, that didn't face me at all. And then his head falls off, and you're like, ah! <laughs> Yeah. That actually happened. No, I'm just oh, kidding. Oh, shit. Uh, no. <laughs> so, uh, of, of course, all these guys came out because we have a fatal five-way elimination match with Samoa Joe watching ringside because this right. match decides who faces him. Literally any one of these dudes could be the number one contender for the universal title. Universal, t- yeah. And they're... Having a five-way elimination title or elimination match yeah. to determine the number one contender right. for the U.S. title. Like, what? <clears throat> what is happening? Yeah, I mean, it was so obvious he was going to win. Because if it's Braun, like, you know, he would just squash Joe. Right. If it was, You can't have Lashley because that's just two heels. Yes. So uh, it Cesaro, was pretty obvious. you don't... He's like Cesaro's kind of a heel weird, too. He's a heel, but everyone still likes him. Yeah, yeah. And then Miz is just a little bitch, so he, he never Miz, wins. Miz does not win shit when he's a face, and he proves it. Right. So a uh, lot this week. Yeah. <laughs> so Cesaro manages to get Braun on his shoulders, and then he drops him. That was impressive. Uh huh. However, Braun eliminates Cesaro after power slamming Lashley onto Cesaro. Then a couple of minutes later, Braun eliminates Lashley with a power slam. Uh, Braun then did his around the world thing, and Ricochet did a full flip. Nice. Because he's awesome. Yeah. And then later, Cesaro and Lashley got back in the ring to team up on Braun because they're salty. And Cesaro gave Braun the neutralizer. That and then, was incredible. It was. And then Ricochet hit Braun with a 630, and then he, Cesaro, and Lashley pinned Braun all together to eliminate him. All of a sudden, they're like, yeah, let's help Ricochet. Yeah. Because he has no chance against Samoa Joe. Because fuck Braun. <laughs> right. Yeah, I guess so. So Braun then wakes up right after that, and he throws Ricochet out of the ring and onto Lashley, and then he chases Cesaro up the stage, and he pushes Cesaro into the screen, and we go to commercial. Hmm. It's funny how Braun's faster than everyone. Right, of course. Like, even Cesaro. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, the guy's in, like... Peak shape and yeah. Braun still. Braun doesn't even bend his knees when he runs. <laughs> like his knees are shot. He like waddles. <laughs> they are his knees are shot. Like I don't think he could bend his knees. Yeah. I think his knees are fucked up. Oh. Uh so, anyways, Miz and Ricochet were the final two, and uh they had a nice one-on-one match. Miz put Ricochet in the figure four, but Ricochet made it to the ropes, and the you know, the ref made Miz break. Right. Even though it's a no disqualification match. Correct. So rope break shouldn't be a thing. No. They don't even know their own rules. No. Oh, well, there's only two guys in here now, so... <laughs> Normal match. <laughs> Normal rules. <Yeah. laughs> Wild card. <laughs> right. God, it was like... um, What was it? Last year's Extreme Rules pay-per-view? 
There was only like a couple of matches that had any stipulations, right? And, and like, like we like, made the joke, it was like, "Oh, normal, normal rules match." No, like it was all right, regular rules. And then the ones that did have stipulations, it was like a no holds barred, yeah, a no disqualification, <laughs> and a false count anywhere. Like those are the same damn thing, pretty much. Yeah, no count out. No, no, no count. Oh outs. yeah, no count out. <laughs> so, anyways, in the end, Miz springs off the top rope. Uh, but Ricochet hits him with a code breaker. Because Miz is an idiot and doesn't learn his lesson that yes. he's not a high flyer. Right. But I guess uh, the code breaker is Ricochet's move now. Fuck it. They, he took it from Jericho. Jericho doesn't even want it. Yeah. He's right. got the the Judas elbow. The Judas elbow. elbow or... Yeah. Judas but he, elbow. <laughs> but, but he hit the code breaker right before that, right? He when did. he beat he did. Omega? Yeah. Yeah. It was... I, I, whatever. Right. No one cares, know. really. Yeah. Um, so he hits the code breaker and then he hits the 630 for the win. And then right after the match, Joe attacks Ricochet, but Ricochet is the one who stands tall. Like he throws him out of the ring, he jumps on him, and then he celebrates in the ring as yeah. Joe Fli- cries. Flips and yeah. Flips and dips and ships. Ships. <laughs> Next up we have uh, Becky Lynch in ring promo. She immediately calls out Lacey Evans. Lacey comes out and talks about how she used to be a Marine, and it's weird because she's a heel. And yet she's saying something that you can't boo. Right. So why would they have right, her say like, that? I used to be a Marine. Boo. Sweetheart. Hey. Yeah. Fuck you, guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> and since Lacey said that, Becky had to say, well, you know, I respected who you were because you used to be a Marine, but not who you are now. Oh, right. Which, what, what is she now? A slut? She is. And she she was... turned her back on the, like the Marine code, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, hey, maybe she could be the new Marine for the new Marine movies. Jesus, that's going to happen. <laughs> that is going to happen. Um, but no, she was being extra slutty this week, she, which I enjoyed. I mean, I, I have to admit, she was pulling up her skirt and like kind of touching herself. And then she got on the apron. And then Andrew was touching himself. Yeah. She got on the apron and she started to do Stacey Keebler's ring entrance. Yeah. Where she just, Bends all the way over. Like 90 degree angle. And super slow. Right. And it's actually kind of impossible to get in the ring that way. <laughs> like you have to get in that position and then get out of it to actually get in the ring. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Stacy made it work. She did. Well, her legs were like four feet, nine inches. Yeah. I think. Right. Maybe like six feet. And the rest of her body was like a foot. Yeah. So she was all legs. She's like... My arm, and then this is her body. Yeah, you're watching, right? Yeah, that's it. I, I still, I mean, I still can't believe you picked Lana over Stacy. What you, the hell, Eric? Well, you know, <laughs> you do that to me every single time. <laughs> I tell you my pick, and you interrupt me, like, "Oh yeah, let me see." I pick uh, Lana. You pick Lana, and, um, like, and it, yeah. it like it just escalates. I'm like, gosh, every time. Like even uh, last time when we did a, a, a Patreon exclusive. I was like, hey, what do you guys want? Uh, like uh, hamburgers, pizza. Uh-huh. And you were like, oh, I want hamburgers. I'm like, pizza? <laughs> I was just trying to work that weird. Yes. Yeah. Pizza? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, the anniversary. Was it the anniversary? No, it wasn't. It? it wasn't the anniversary. I just yeah. uh, I just wanted to look at it. I watched it again and I did. It's and... like the quintessential. <laughs> it's the most iconic moment. I caught it. Yes. Yeah. So I yeah re, I posted on Twitter, Facebook, Everywhere. Instagram, all that. So good stuff. So if you've never seen pizza, yeah, now you can see it. Yeah, and uh, you should watch that bracket too. Definitely, it's our first ever bracket. First ever bracket. So yeah, Lacey starts doing the Stacy Keebler ring entrance, uh, but while she's bending over, Becky grabs her and gives her the Beck Sploder. Uh huh. And then Becky puts on Lacey's hat and leaves with her title. Yeah. So there you go. Like a lady. Like a lady. <laughs> uh, backstage, the Revival are dressed up, and they're holding their Raw Tag Team titles, and they go into a room where Shane and Drew McIntyre are waiting with appetizers and champagne. And whores or d'oeuvres. <laughs> is, <every week, laughs> is every week a celebration? It is. With them? Hey, when you roll with Shane McMahon, <laughs> it's a nonstop party. Like, I want to see them get out of, like, a limo. Yeah. With, like, like, Ric Flair style next right. week. Like, just coked up. Like, <laughs> lots of empty bottles of champagne coming out. Yeah. They're all just wasted. <laughs> like, the strippers, like, try to, like, get out, too. 
Have one of the strippers win the 24-7 title. Sure, why not? Like, truth, lay down or you're fired. And then she, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then Elias would win it from the stripper. Mm -hmm. And then truth would eventually get it back from Elias. Because that's what exactly always what happens. Exactly. Yeah. Baseball season is in full swing, and placing a wager on baseball has never been more exciting than with betonline.ag. You guys might know that I'm a Mets fan, and let me tell you, there's nothing more satisfying than betting on your favorite team to win, and then they do. And because you're a loyal listener of What's Wrong With Wrestling and CLNS Media, we're going to give you an extra 50% added onto your sports betting bankroll when you go to clnsmedia.com slash wrestling pod and use the promo code CLNS50. The best part is the bonus will be added to your balance within seconds. Again, support our podcast by going to clnsmedia.com slash wrestling pod and use code CLNS50. A minimum of $25 is required to qualify for the bonus. Please see BetOnline's general rules for additional terms and conditions regarding bonuses. BetOnline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. Next up, Charlie Caruso interviews Baron Corbin backstage. Caruso tells Corbin that Elias is no longer interested in being the special referee. Corbin says he has someone else in mind, and he will reveal this during the Kevin and Sammy show. Mm. And then Seth hits Corbin with a chair out of nowhere and says, I'd offer you a seat, but it looks like I've got more work to do. But uh, I, I like Seth no fucks given Rollins. Right. I like falling down Seth Rollins. He's <laughs> Michael Douglas and falling down. Yeah. Like just instead of a bat, he has a chair. Yeah. He's like, I'm not taking this shit no more. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I can get, be- I can get behind this Seth. Yeah. You know? Right. It's good stuff. Almost heel, Seth. Yeah, kind of a little Bad stone boy. coldish. Yeah, he just Bad doesn't boy, care. Seth. He's like, I'm gonna keep this title no matter what. No matter what. Because we all like Seth the most when he was a heel. We and do. He's acting kind of heelish, so he's right. getting over. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan come out to the stage. Wild card. That's three. Wild card. Thank you. Thank Brad, you for, three. Yeah. Thank you for doubling up. All right. Cool. Uh, Daniel says he was asked to be a wild card because this place sucks, meaning Raw and the city of Los Angeles. So yeah. they both suck. So they're just shitting on L.A. Yeah. This whole show. Right. That's two, right? Yeah. Two L.A. references. It two, won't be the last. Two I hate L.A. references. Randy Newman is spinning in his grave. <laughs> uh, however, they are interrupted by the Viking Raiders. No, that you would you'd think they'd be a wild card. They just haven't been on the show in a while. A wild, <laughs> wild card. <laughs> um, but the Viking Raiders are back. All right. It's been, what, a, over a month? And they are claiming the tag titles. No. No, they're starting all over again. From? Like they're fighting two jobbers. They're not like starting over as in they got to fight the champs. No. To get a shot to fight the champs. And then if they beat the champs, then they get a shot. Last time we saw the Viking Raiders, uh huh, they beat Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins in the ring. In the ring. And at the time, they were the tag champs. They were. Ryder and Hawkins. Making them what you would think number one contenders. Yes. They were number one contenders, all right. <laughs> right. Number one contenders to not be on TV. Yes. And they fought that battle hard. Yes, they did. Yeah. Now they're back to square one. Right. Fighting two jobbers. Well, it, I mean, it's basic wrestle math. Ryder and Hawkins aren't tag t- team champs anymore. Yeah. So you be a team that's no longer tag champs. Yeah. So, you, yeah. Hey, Start you missed at the bottom. You missed your last five flights to Raw. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Like five weeks in a row, you just missed your flight. Yeah. That, uh, that future title opportunity was if Ryder and Hawkins still had the belt. Exactly. Come on, man. And now, do, that I, do rev- I need to get Scott Steiner to explain this? Yes. <laughs> and now that the revival are the champs. And the Revival mm-hmm. are bad guys. Right. And the Viking Raiders are bad guys. It's not happening for a while. Anytime soon. So the Raiders get a quick and easy win, of course. Yeah. Well, if if uh, the Revival are the tag champs, 
And usually who beats the tag champs are the number one contender. Mm -hmm. So literally every team is number one contender. <laughs> That's true. Yes. So there's like six teams in contention everyone, right now. Everyone but the Viking Raiders. Yeah, basically. I think AOP. Uh... I think Lucha House Party is the number one contender, actually. <laughs> Jesus. With the most wins. God. Oh my God, that's true. <laughs> it is. They had like four in a row. Oh, Jesus. Like a, a month. We, uh, like, it was like a month of Raw. For a, for a whole month, we had to watch the Lucha, Lucha Fuck Party beat the Revival. Yeah. Because of Lucha House rules. Uh huh. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, yeah, the Raiders get a quick and easy win. And then they cut to the front row where a bunch of planted fans are booing the Viking Raiders. They're just like, boo, yeah, boo. We we don't like you because we were told not to. Exactly. Hey, you guys get a front row seats if you just, you know, boo, boo, these the, guys. boo the Viking Raiders. Okay, sure. Yeah. But then we pass our truth and Carmella. Wild card! Yeah. Sport. Truth gets a pass only because he's the 24-7 champion. Right. I, I honestly have no idea what show Truth is on. He's... Be. He's 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 listed as on SmackDown. He is. Yes. Okay. Um, but we'll give him a pass. All right. Fine. All right. Wild. Pass. Carmella's not his manager, so fuck that. She's right. just his friend. Yeah. She's a wild card. Yeah. And they're friend playing. Zone. They're playing dress up. <laughs> friend zone. Yeah. Yeah. They're dressed up as like he's dressed up as some military sergeant or some bullshit, like George Washington or With something. A baby. With a baby, and then she's like. Kind Char of dressed like Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. But, like, Carmella's so tan. Like, she's, like, one tan away from, like, blackface. Like, she needs to untan herself. Jesus. She's too dark. Yeah. Like, she's tanning way too much. It's almost offensive. Right. So then uh, jobbers run out after truth, which includes Cedric Alexander, Drake Maverick, Bobby Roode, Zack Ryder, and Kurt Hawkins. They're not tag team champs no. anymore. <laughs> Last week... They were the champs last week. And this week, they are in the jobber pack. Yes. Looking for our truth. And again, it, you know, this makes zero... Like, if you're trying to hide, why are you in the front fucking row? Right. Well, <laughs> raw. Well, okay, whatever. I guess that's too obvious. But Truth and Carmella go under the ring, and then the jobbers reach under, and they pull out Titus O'Neil. So they were like, oh, look, it's... That looks like our truths leg. Let's grab that. And it ends up being Titus O'Neil. Yeah. I guess and he's he, just he under just, the ring. He just slid under there. We never at find some point. out. We never, yeah, we never find out why he was under the ring. No. Maybe he was trying to ambush. And Titus was upset. Like, Look, I was sleeping under there. Yeah, I can almost guarantee you WWE posted an under the ring video oh, again. Oh god. I can almost guarantee and it. Titus is just sleeping. Titus He's was just, just snoring. sleeping. <sighs> That'd be funny because uh, like 24/7 title. Like you know, we know there's a microphone under the ring. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes, here it is. Oh my god. So, truth goes under. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, how did... So Titus tried to pin our truth under the ring, and then Truth, I guess, got his shoulder up, and then they pulled him out. They pulled Titus also, out. Also, let's... That's why Titus let's is upset. Let's not forget that this uh, referee was, like, counting a hard three count on that baby. <laughs> he was? Yes. It's <laughs> like, one, two! <laughs> like, hitting it as hard as he could. Hey, you killed my baby! Right. Uh, yeah, so then Truth and Carmella <sighs> get out from under the ring and they run away. And never seen from again. Yeah. That was kind of funny, though. Like, hey, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's right. Day to you. Right. Like, Show that. I don't know. What, just to get Instagram followers? I guess they can't fit a camera under there. They can fit an intern with a cell phone, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so back at Shane's party, Heath Slater walks in. But unfortunately, the audio isn't working, so Michael Cole starts narrating, and he's, he literally says, well, that's Heath Slater, Shane McMahon, the Revival, and Drew McIntyre. <laughs> that's <laughs> Michael Cole narrating. In case someone who has never watched the show before <laughs> just happens to be watching yeah. at this exact time moment and you're narrating stuff that's not even wrestling this is just michael cole who he just doesn't know what he's doing right 
I bet Vince was like, talk, damn it! Just say something! Say some good shit! <laughs> yeah. So the audio eventually works, and Heath asks Shane for a raise because he's got kids. And they're getting older. Right, so that shit... You're still a WWE wrestler. Yeah. Like, we know you make good money. Like, chill on the hookers and blow, dude. <laughs> Jesus. Like, he's been with them for how long? At this when point, did, it's not like I got kids. It's like, I got hookers. When, when did Nexus <laughs> debut? Like, 2010? Uh, yeah. He's been with the company for like eight, nine years. It, surely he's gotten a couple raises. Yeah. And he Just makes, based on tenure. Yes. I mean, come on now. Yeah. Uh, so he asked for a raise. Shane says, you know, it takes guts walking here like, in here like this. I'm impressed. Uh, but no, fuck you. This is a private party, so get out of here. Yeah. So Heath leaves, but then Shane gives McIntyre a, a look like, go kill that motherfucker. <laughs> go kill him. Uh, then outside the room, Heath calls his wife, and he's like, I can get the money on me. <laughs> like, he might have, why didn't they let him do that? Right. Because he was just like, hey, honey, what's going on? And then you keep, the woman's like, so what happened? <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, I'm a giant pussy, and I, didn't, I couldn't get the raise. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, technically... They shouldn't even employ me. I'm never on the show. Yeah. I lose every match. Right. I'm house show fodder. Why do I have a job? Even if WWE released Heath Slater, would AEW even sign him? Right. Hey, hey, honey. Uh, so I, I asked Shane for the raise, and he said no. Can, can you go blow Cody Rhodes so I can get a job there? <laughs> it's like, he, he's like, oh, I didn't get the raise. Okay. Hey, Cody, it's Heath. So, good news. I just got released from WWE, and now I'm a free agent. <laughs> Cody? <laughs> Cody? Hello? <laughs> Sorry, this number has blocked you. Right. <laughs> Hello, Dixie? <laughs> Is TNA still a thing? <laughs> You're not in charge anymore? Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. Did, did your dad buy you another wrestling promotion? <laughs> right. Oh, damn it. So, Heath... Uh, <laughs> He calls his wife, McIntyre walks up and offers Heath some money. <laughs> like, just some cash. Like, hey, I know you're short on hey, cash, I'm man. I'm Drew McIntyre and I keep pockets full of cash. <laughs> yeah. Look at the $100 bills coming out of his pockets, <laughs> brother. <laughs> so Heath declines, but McIntyre tells him, you know, we go way back. It was funny because he reminded me. I was like, oh, right, three-man band. Three-man band. He's like, we go way back. I know your family, so let me help you out, Heath. And then McIntyre drops the money on the floor, like, oh... And then Heath bends down to pick it up, but then McIntyre starts beating the shit out of him. Uh huh. And then Shane and Revival come out to pull Drew off Slater, like, hey, what are you doing, man? Yeah, don't beat up this guy. Who I just told you to beat up. Right. And then uh, the funniest part of this was Dash. When Jinder runs up and he's like, we're getting back together? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I'm out. Yeah. They um, took my, my cronies. Yeah, so... Yeah, they pulled Drew off Slater, but again, the funniest part was Dash and Dawson pocketed the money. <laughs> like, first, first Heath Slater was holding one of, the, like, the $100 bills or whatever, and then, like, as they're pulling off uh, Drew McIntyre, Scott Dawson just is like, yoink, and he pockets it, and then once Drew and Shane leave, they just pick up the rest <laughs> of the money and stuff it in their pockets. <laughs> right. Hey, did you guys see where all that money went? No, uh, I think uh, our truth left with it. Yeah. <laughs> Get him! <laughs> it's funny how, like, this might have been, like, the first show where they're actually using the revival properly. Right. Like, they're a part of, even though it's not a stable. It's a, it's a stable. It just doesn't it's have a, a name. It's a stable, but it's still nothing. And it's a stable with Shane McMahon. Like, for McIntyre, this is, like, a downgrade because he's not. he doesn't have a title. No. If McIntyre had a title, like the U.S. title or something, right. at least, it would make somewhat set, like somewhat sense. But yeah. the Revival have tag titles, and they're aligning themselves with Shane McMahon, and yeah. they're also getting to be funny, like, with the money thing and stuff. Like, I mean, if you really think about it, like, the Revival are the tag champs. They were jobbers. Drew McIntyre is basically Roman's jobber at this point. <laughs> right. uh, and then you've got Elias, who literally jobs to everybody. Yes, that's true. Like, yeah. when was the last time Elias won a match? Was it, well, I guess against the uh, Miz last week? Because nine people cheated for him? Yeah. Or did then, Miz actually win against Elias? No, he beat Elias. Oh, he didn't? didn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Elias, no. can't, Elias can't win anything. Elias 
beat our truth for the 24 7 title that's his and then lost it right back immediately and then what does he do on smackdown this this week he mm-hmm. beat our, he eliminated our truth <laughs> yeah. he can only beat our truth yeah and he's like i won the title oh shit damn it right it wasn't in effect yeah so next up we have the kevin and sammy show it's one more sammy's on raw so it's just kevin okay um, but KO, as usual, is great. Now, Sammy, I, I have to apologize. I told them to up, up, uh, update the graphics. I told them to have the new signs ready, and it wasn't ready. Thanks a lot, Bob! <laughs> Classic Kevin Owens. Classic Bob. Classic Bob. <laughs> so they introduce their guest, Baron Corbin, and tell him they are both taking themselves out of consideration to be the special guest referee because of the unsafe work environment due to Seth Rollins. And then Corbin announces who he picked. Mm. EC3. All right. So out Finally comes... Finally using him. Using him. EC3 comes out on a referee shirt to the stage, but then Seth hits him in the back with a chair and then leaves. All right. Still not using EC3. <laughs> um, Corbin gets upset. And he's like, well, it looks like it's back to the drawing board. But then... Uh-huh. Out comes the new day. Wild Wait. Card. Wild card. And Wild card. so three, three more. <laughs> yeah. Where are we at right now? Uh, let me see. Let me run these numbers by the boys in the lab real quick. Just yeah. Just a second. Yeah. That's <laughs> carry that one. Uh huh. No, uh, that's squared. Oh boy. We're up to eight. Eight. Eight wild cards. Eight wild cards on Raw. Yeah. So double what, what they said. Double what, what's allowed. So far. About average for what they have every we're, week. We're not done yet. Oh, shit. So Biggie, come, they come out. Biggie takes off his robe and he places it over EC3 and they pretend they're at a funeral. Well, <laughs> Which they, it might as well be. They kind of are. <laughs> uh, Sammy tells Kofi, I checked the lineup and you're not wild cards. But then Kofi says, I'm the WWE champion, so I go wherever I want. So you could say, well, they're not officially wild cards. They're just showing up. Um, I mean, it's the same thing. That's what wild card is. Yeah. Plus, Vince said, if someone shows up who's not a wild card, they will be like suspended or fired. Yeah. And that's happened every week, and no one's been suspended or fired. Or fired. Yeah. Hmm. So they're all wild cards. They are. So at the end of the day, like at the end of the show, they're like, all right, Vince. So we had, you know, Sammy was a wild card. He was scheduled to be here. He was. Um, uh, but we have these six other people who were not. That were not scheduled. Can you just sign off on these? Can I just get your initials? I just want to make sure that, um, you know, nothing Do you want to? Do you want to fire Roman Reigns? Because he was uh, an unscheduled wild card. You're right. Um, no, just, just to prove all the wild cards. They're all, they're all fine. They're just to prove them all. So, uh, yeah, so Kofi says, I can go wherever I want because I'm the champ. Uh, Corbin then offers the New Day to come to the ring to get a beating, and the New Day accepts, and they pick up a passed-out EC3 and basically reenact Weekend at Bernie's with him. It's so good. They're like, oh, can uh, can you sanction this match? And then they, like, shake, you know, uh, EC3 up and down. <laughs> yeah. So he says yes. Yeah. That was really funny. How did he not laugh during that? I, I, seriously. Right. Yeah. Maybe he's just so dead inside from this, <laughs> from being on the main roster. From, from the, the main event video. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, EC through the Titan Tron, he's like, E. C. C. And then he's just like three. he turns around, he's three. just like <laughs> He does the turn. He's just like, uh he's like, like <laughs> Whatever. Hey. Hey, me C three. Who the fuck am I? Born friend? and bred, profess claim every top, top dollar brand my name. I'm on. Just one percent of the show. <laughs> oh, that's good. So we have the New Day versus Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Baron Corbin with a real referee. Oh, okay. How amazing though would it have been if they had EC3 as the ref and he's just face down, like uh, ass up in the ring, just passed out for the whole match. <laughs> Right. (laughs) And like at the end, they just, you know, make EC3 do the. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so fucking great. Yeah. So it's a two out of three fall, two out of three falls match, by the way, for some reason. (laughs) For for some reason. This match is not for a title. 
it's not for anything. Uh huh. Why does it need a stipulation? Right. Please tell me. Explain. Please. So Woods rolls up Sammy to get the first fall. Corbin accidentally clotheslines Sammy after Kofi ducks. Kevin Owens and Corbin have a shoving match that ends with KO super kicking Corbin. KO and Sammy bail, and then Kofi hits Corbin with the trouble in paradise for the win. So they sweep the two out of three falls. Interesting. Yes. Remember that. Remember that. <laughs> Next up, we go into the trainer's room where AJ Styles finds out he's medically cleared. Um, but I guess I guess not medically cleared enough to have a match at Stomping Grounds? Nope. So uh, in walk in, Gallows and Anderson dressed as doctors, and they're pretending they're about to give Styles a fucking rectal exam. Mm. Like, all right, bend over. Yeah. Styles is like, no, 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 I don't need that. And he talks to them about their WWE debut, which was in the Staples Center, and that they got to be the Raw Tag Team champs for a month. Even though they've been there for seven years. <laughs> what is I'm, it, four years? Four years. Three years. Yeah, I think like four, three, four years. Like three and a half, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he then says, you know, oh, the Usos are the best tag team in the world because Gallows and Anderson got comfortable. Of course, they take offense to that. AJ gives them some tough love and tells them they need to get serious. But Anderson tells AJ, well, you know, we have a match against the Usos tonight. See how serious it is when we beat the so-called best tag team on the planet. He's like, yeah, let's get serious. And he throws up like the two sweet and AJ's like, uh... I got to take this call. <laughs> hey, but we saw you too sweet Triple H on Instagram the other day. Hello? Why won't you too sweet us anymore? <laughs> right. We're go- we got to fight in Japan together. Yeah, that's the only reason why they're on TV right now. Right. It's because they're fighting in Japan next week or whatever. Yeah. They uh, want people to know who they are. Exactly. Backstage, Alexa brings Nikki Cross an Alexa Bliss coffee mug with a note inside. And the note reads that Alexa and Nikki have a tag team title match against the Iconics tonight. And Nikki is super excited, and Alexa tells her to try decaf next time. Ha. Ha ha. Oh. That's Alexa's gimmick. Yeah. I like coffee. Yeah. I can't wait for like uh, Nikki Cross's new gimmick where she's just like, I like turtles. <laughs> no, Nikki's gimmick is she likes too much coffee. I like Alexa. Nikki what? drinks too much coffee. That's her gimmick. Yeah. So next up, we have an in-ring promo from Paul Heyman. He eh. says he doesn't feel too comfortable being out here with Seth Rollins, you know, going crazy, hitting people with chairs. Right. And he says he wouldn't be the special referee if Corbin asked and says you'd have to be a dumbass to accept that offer. Mm. Wink, wink. Hint, hint. Couldn't, I mean, he might as well wink in the camera like 20 times. Yeah. Heyman then makes a joke saying... What do the Lakers and Seth Rollins have in common? They both traded away their balls. So that's three. Three L.A. references. It is. Two of them Lakers. We hate L.A. Yes. Uh, He then says no one knows when Brock is cashing in, including Seth freaking Rollins. Not even the people who write the script for the show. (laughs) Exactly. Which, again, that's the whole point of Money in the Bank. It is. It really is. Is that we don't know. Yeah. Backstage, Corbin asks Eric Young... To be the referee. Boy, is he out of options. Wow. <laughs> He's out Jeez. of options. Hey, uh, Eric Young, uh, you know, I really saw that st- stellar performance <laughs> last week with the 24 7 title. <laughs> and uh, hey, uh, you want to be the guest ref? <laughs> yeah. Please. It's, right. it's a paycheck. <laughs> so Young's like, I'll oh, think about it because he's basically. He, he has, I think he's has a voice box at this point. I think so. His fucking voice is so yeah. crazy. He's going to be the next Kane. Yeah. He says, I'll think about it. They shake hands. Young walks away, but Seth Rollins is there waiting for him. And Young, who is a part of Sanity, the crazy group who's not afraid of anything. Anything. Young's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, I'm turning down the offer. I don't look good in stripes anyway. Oh, oh gee golly. Uh, don't hurt me. Right. So Seth tells Young, relax, bud. We go back a long way. I know you'd never do anything to compromise our friendship. Take it easy, man. Seth starts to walk away, and Eric Young is relieved. But then Seth smashes the chair across Eric Young's back. Heal Seth. And not just once. Like, he hits him with it. Then he goes to the ground. Then he just hits him. This is what he does to everyone. Yeah. Like, this is Seth turning on the shield. And then he throws the chair, and then he just grabs him by, like, the back of his head. And he just starts... (laughs) 
and, and then, then he like pit, blood. And then he takes a piss on him. <laughs> he just takes out his dick and just pisses, pisses all over on his him. Bloody, pulpy <laughs> face. <laughs> and a beautiful portrait yeah. is painted with his bodily fluids. <laughs> Because he jerked him off, too. Nightingale. It was blood, piss, uh, and semen. And then Seth walks away, and he's like, oh, say hi to your daughter for me. <laughs> yeah. Right. So next up, we have the Usos versus Gallows and Anderson. Ah. The Good Brothers hit the boot of doom 30 seconds into the match. Uh-huh. But a kick out. Well, when you lose for you know two years straight, your finishers lose power. <laughs> I guess so. It's a little known fact. Yeah. Yeah. The Usos get the win... Three minutes later, with a double a double super kick to Gallows, who's like six ten, yeah, and the Usos are like five two, yeah, and then backstage they just show AJ Styles and he's like, "Damn it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Fuck, we're gonna lose in Japan." Yeah, I mean, well, you know, you could remedy this, AJ. Yeah, like, oh, I'll go out with you, right? And we'll take care of business together. No, he's such a good guy now. He's he such a good guy. He Plus, he's got that it. killer feud with the trainers. Yeah, and can I it- wrestle yet? <laughs> no, no. Damn it! Oh man, find out what happens next week. <laughs> yes, uh, that'd be funny. Like they go to Japan and like Triple H and Styles just tag each other in. And they don't, don't even they, tag in. They don't tag in Gallows or Anderson. They're like, we watch the show. We we know what's going on. <laughs> Not on your life. Uh, we want to win this. We, yeah, we want to win. Please. All right. So next up, we have an in-ring promo from Roman Reigns. Card! Number you. nine. Number nine with a bullet. Roman calls out Shane to face him one-on-one right now, but Shane appears on the Titan Tron instead. Uh, Shane makes Mike Rome give him the proper introduction, which, like, no one else is... Like, Rome is the only one in the ring. Why doesn't he just go up to Mike Rome and, like, grab the mic from him and be like, don't fucking say that yeah, bullshit. Yeah, right. Just be like, no. That would have been cool. Yeah, like, I can just be like, no. Hey, I need to... You want to do a solo podcast? Hmm. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, so, you know, McIntyre then tells Roman, I'm going to physically disfigure you. I want you to go home, and your kids will scream when they see the sight of their father. So Roman leaves the ring, and he heads to their party, which he should have just went there to begin with. You know, right. like, just go there. Just go to their party. Yeah. Um, he beats up the Revival outside the room, and then he gets inside. He puts McIntyre through a table, and then Shane runs away, and he chases him to the ring area. He catches up to Shane, beats the crap out of him. Superman punch, followed by a spear. And then he grabs the mic and looks at Shane and says, tell McIntyre, I'm going to whoop his ass on Sunday. Oh, and he's cool because he said ass. Right. By the way, Roman is a SmackDown superstar. Uh Uh-huh. That's why he's a wild card on Raw. Correct. Didn't show up to SmackDown. Nope. (laughs) Yeah. He shows up to Raw where he's not Not a a superstar. Right. He's wild card. But doesn't show up to the show he's actually on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Whatever. So next up, we go backstage and we have Naomi, Natalia, and Bailey hanging out. Right. Pretty sure she's the SmackDown Women's Champ. Yeah. So I'm that's, pretty sure why that belt is blue. So that that's ten. That is ten wild cards. <laughs> I think that's all of them. Right. Even if you count the New Day as a collective unit, you're that's, still over. That's still seven. Even if you counted Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan as a unit, that's still you're still over. Yes. <laughs> Just no rules, no shits given. Even if you gave Carmella a pass, yeah. you're still over. <laughs> you are. Oh, man. Mm. So anyways, Charlie Caruso walks up. Oh, she's a wild... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Charlie Caruso walks up, and she asks Bailey about some allegations that Bailey refused to take a picture with a young fan because she was wearing a Nikki Cross shirt. This like, is what is... This is this feud. Yes. This feud. This is the best way you can come up for them to fight each other. This is some of the shittiest writing... She liked a mean tweet on Twitter. Yeah. She she turned down a picture with the kid. She stole my coffee. No, she fucking didn't. She's Bailey. 
Yeah. She takes a picture with literally every kid. Even if this was true, it's like, so? So, who cares? <laughs> right. So, Bailey says, this has Alexa Bliss written all over it. I'll take care of her. And she walks away. Then Natalia asks Naomi, do you think she... <laughs> I can't... She can't even get through it. Do you think she'd actually not take a picture with a fan? <laughs> like, Natalia's devastated about that possible truth. Well, I mean, clearly, uh, she doesn't watch SmackDown because Bailey said herself she is done with hugs. Yeah. And then she keeps hugging everyone. <laughs> And she comes out with the Bailey buddies. With the Bailey buddies. And, and then she the hugs. The Bailey buddies somehow hug each other. <laughs> and then she hugs the Bailey buddies. And then Bailey hugs like five little girls in the five crowd. Five fans in the way there, unless they're like a creepy guy <laughs> yeah. begging for a hug. <laughs> I don't know. Like, if you've never seen it, there's a video out there where <laughs> Bailey's walking to the rail yeah. to hug somebody, and this guy shows up. <laughs> and he reaches out, and she literally goes right under his arms and yeah. hugs the little girl next to him. And he's just standing there with his arms, like, out, out. And then he's like, as soon as he's like, oh, just give her a pat on the back, she darts out of there. Yeah. Like, it's creeper great. alert. It's like, what do you call it when, like, um, a guy takes a picture with a girl, but he has and he has her arm behind her, but he's not touching her? Being safe. I, I know, yeah, I know, but there's, like, a... There's like a word for I don't that know. or a phrase. Did you see the thing? Like Keanu Reeves has like a bunch of pictures like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He's like a smart guy. Not taking any chances. <laughs> He's a smart guy. See both of my hands? They're there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so next up we have the Iconics versus Alexa and Nikki for the women's tag team titles. Uh-huh. Billy and Peyton come out first and they make the third Lakers joke of the night. Fourth LA joke. Third Lakers joke. Right. Nikki... Well, the Lakers were in the NBA Finals, right? No. Huh. That's what. That's what they're like. Oh, they didn't even make the playoffs. Not even close. Fuck. Yeah. Le- LeBron sucks. Yeah. Uh, well, everyone's like that. So Nikki actually gets her music played this week for like twenty seconds before uh-huh. Alexa comes out. So that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. No wonder they don't play it. <laughs> Are you can, They play Lars Sullivan. Oh yeah. <laughs> So uh, they're going to replace that with Nightingale. Oh my God, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Would you ever ask a Nightingale? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So Bailey comes out to watch ringside. Alexa pushes Bailey to the grounds. Billy rolls up Nikki. Alexa tries to break it up, but Bailey pulls Alexa out of the ring and the iconics retain. Yep. If you don't watch NXT, or if you haven't, when Nikki was there and the Iconics were in NXT, Nikki beat the piss out of the Iconics. All the time. Yeah, all the time. All the time. And here, she, she sucks and they're better than her. Yeah. So, yeah. Backstage, Nikki tells Alexa, Bailey crushed my dreams and I want you to crush hers. I'll be in your corner at Stomping Grounds. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Next up, we have episode nine of Firefly Funhouse. Um, so this must four be... Four episodes left for the Netflix series. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Some shows have ten. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's ten. Well, who would be kidding? It's WWE. Yeah. Uh, 16 episodes, at least. Right. So this week, we discover that Bray is a conspiracy nut, claiming that the Earth is flat and dinosaurs never existed. What is going on? Cool. What is going on? Right. This is his gimmick. Is part of his gimmick he's is a that he's a flat earther. He's a flat earther. <laughs> yeah. And a dinosaur denier. Right. What's he gonna say next week? Oh, the Holocaust! Like that happens. Anti-vax. <laughs> Anti-vax. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then all Bray and all the puppets say, "Join us," including the Vince puppet, who's like, "Join us, indie talent." Don't go to AEW. Join us. It's good shit. It's good shit. Join this good shit. Uh, then we see a video. Then they kind of like do a remix. Of his Muscle Man dance song. The Muscle Man dance. And he's in the scary Halloween mask. The Slipknot mask. The Slipknot mask. Yeah. And then he says, let me in. And, you know. Let me in. So. Let me in, Randy. Again, I don't know how much longer of this. Right. But. And then he has like a giant hammer still. 
Yeah. So he's reforming the Bludgeon Brothers with uh, Luke Harper. Yes. Confirmed. Confirmed. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, next up, we have Seth Rollins versus Daniel Bryan for the main events. Yep. Michael Cole must have said 10 times leading up to this match that Seth Rollins has never beaten Daniel Bryan. Ten, like at least 10 times during the yeah. show. So 60 seconds into the match... Seth Rollins beats Daniel Bryan. <laughs> yeah. Eric Rowan slams Rollins on the apron with the iron claw, resulting in a DQ. Daniel then hits Seth with the running knee, but then the New Day run out for the save, and then Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and the Revival run out, and then the Usos run out, and the good guys clear the ring. Multiple refs come out to split everyone up, and then Mike Rome says this match will restart with no one allowed ringside. And this was all on TV. What? 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 Even Michael Cole said, well, whoever made that decision. Yeah. Because Mike Rome made the decision. Right. Mike Rome gets to make match decisions. <laughs> Mike Rome is uh, the GM. Mike Rome's like, restart the match. Right. <laughs> That's it. I'm call. I'm making the call. <laughs> yeah. And this is a no DQ match. No. So um, they restart the match. Rollins wins in seven minutes with a curb stomp, but it might have been the best seven-minute match of all time. They had a really good seven-minute match. Right. Um, it felt really big. You know, obviously, they shouldn't have wasted it on Raw, but they're desperate for ratings at this point. Exactly. After the match, Rollins celebrates on the stage, but Corbin hits him from behind with a chair multiple times. Mm -hmm. He hits the end of dice in the, the ring, dice. and then he holds up the Universal Championship. So... Uh, Look, uh, the show started with the whole chair. Rollins going crazy with the chair, ruining Corbin's night. Uh -huh. And then Corbin gets one back at the end. Yeah. I thought overall it was, even though the wild card shit is retarded and it makes no sense. It, yeah, right. If you could just forget about how stupid that is. Yeah. It was actually a pretty good show. It, like, wa it wasn't very rawful. <laughs> God, that's rawful. Rawful. Um, but uh, it was the first good raw since I can remember. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's been Highly really decent, bad for months. To say the least. Highly decent. Highly decent. And Raw's been so bad for so many months now like, that it's watchable. like, hey, a, whoa, a decent Raw? I know. I mean, not a good Raw, or not an amazing Raw, but decent. Yeah. Maybe a 6 out of 10? or Yeah, sure. What you does know? Bret Hart always give? <laughs> That's 4. 4 out of like 10. 4 out of 10. No, we can do 6 out of six 10. 6 out of 10. Yeah. As opposed to the 3 out of 10s that have been, yeah. you know, every week. Right. So it was nice. 10 wild cards, though. So 10 maybe, wild uh, cards. 10 out of 10 wild cards. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, let's 10 see. out of 4 wild cards. Let's see if uh, SmackDown can keep up all right. with all these wild cards. Yeah. So we start things off with Dolph Ziggler and Xavier Woods. No, they're they're not wild cards. No, they're not. No, they actually started the show with people that belong on the show, and uh, you know we have uh, well first the new day come out they uh, they're quickly interrupted by Dolph, who tells Kofi next time he goes to Ghana it'll be an apology tour uh -huh. because at stomping grounds it's gonna be me. Nice. Which really like Kofi should have been like, <laughs> well fuck you, I'm never going back to Ghana. What? Yeah. Plus, no one likes in sync. I. I <laughs> I only went back to Ghana because I won the WWE Championship. Right. And Vince said it'd be good shit. Yeah. Like, what did they say that when Kofi went to Ghana, they said he hasn't been there in 26, 26 years? 26 years. So he was like eight when, they, when he left Ghana. Basically. That, like, I left Long Island when I was almost seven. Yeah. And like... And I, I, keep, don't, I keep telling you, you'd return as a conquering hero yeah exactly when you go back i'm back right especially if you happen to like have the like pay-per-view prediction yeah right. like i'm gonna oh, book yeah. a, a flight to rhode island <laughs> yeah, get off better. the airplane like i'm here yeah i did it but like no like i'm saying like i've been to long island since many many times right but like and you don't feel like i'm home oh my god i'm back <laughs> right yeah, like, I don't know my way around Long Island. <laughs> yeah. Just like Kofi doesn't know anything about Ghana. Like, yeah. So it's just funny how they did that. Um, so anyways, Kofi's like, fuck you, I'm going to retain. And then we have Dolph Ziggler versus Xavier Woods with Big E and Kofi ringside. And then mid-match, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn come out to attack Big E and Kofi. One! There's one. 
Woods dives on to uh, Sammy and Kevin Owens from the top rope. And then a second ref, Little Nate, uh, comes out and ejects all four men. Mm-hmm. Wait, I think Little Nate is a raw referee. No, I'm just kidding. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, Dolph hits the zigzag, and then he ties Woods up in the ropes. Dolph tries to break Woods' arm, but the ref gets him off. He does the count. But Woods is still tied up in the ropes, so Dolph super kicked him. That was a good super kick. Yeah. yeah. And then he got the win. So next up, we go backstage where Shelton Benjamin and the B team are waiting outside of Baron Corbin's office. Why does he have an office? Or is it a locker room? Is it a. I don't know. Let me ask you this because Baron Corbin, he had a locker room, he had a. Or a locker room office, but we don't see him. But but according to the show, he's there, right? So does that count as a wild card? Uh, he, I think he it does. It does because he's I mean, he, people he, are going in to talk to him, right? In reality, he wasn't there. In reality, he wasn't there. But like in the showing, show canon, he was. So fucking stupid. So How stupid are two? they? Yeah, that's, I would count it. That's two. But still, like it's the, just. Like they never one... show Corbin. You just see people leaving his fucking office. It's right. So it'd be one thing if like they just like showed it and they're like, oh, there's Baron Corbin's office, and then nothing materializes out of it. Right. But people are literally going inside to talk to yeah. him. They should have like shown inside and like they just show like Matt Hardy and he's like, Yeah, yeah, so maybe I'll be your special ref. Okay. Okay, cool. Bye, Baron Corbin. <laughs> He's just like, he leaves. Bye, Baron Corbin. <laughs> so, uh, Bo and Axel are talking about how they want to be the special guest referee because they're fucking idiots. They are. And then Sheldon Benjamin, who he might as well be a wild card who? because we haven't seen him in right. so long. I don't even know if he got drafted anywhere. Yeah. I think he just got left on SmackDown. Oh, shit. I'm a free agent. Oh, oh wait. So Sheldon tells him that Corbin just wants to use anyone to help him win a title. But then Sheldon says, but I don't mind using him. How are you going to use him? Right. You're going to be a ref. You're going to help him win the universal title. And then what did you get out of that? Right. You're going to roll. It's not the 24-7. There's no 24-7 yeah. rule on this one. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Corbin's going to give you a title shot? That's not going to happen. He's a heel. Why would of he course. do that? Of course. You're a heel. You should know this. So the door heel opens. Matt. The door opens, and Matt Hardy walks out, and he looks at Shelton, and he's like, Senor Benjamin, you're next. Which obviously is a reference to his butler or whatever. <laughs> and then Shelton's like, It's Shelton Benjamin, you fuck. Yeah. And then he goes no, inside. No, it's M- Mr. Benjamin. Right. Yeah. And he, he walks inside to talk to. Nobody himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So next up, talk to catering. Next up, we have a moment of bliss with Alexa and Nikki. Wildcard! Alexa and Nikki. Wildcard! Two. We're at four now. Yeah. Four total. Alexa wonders where her coffee is, but out comes her guest Bailey, who is drinking her coffee. <gasps> Oh no! I mean, wow! Just right. what uh, a shit gimmick! I unbelievable! Like coffee. I mean, they she must want to kill her. I know drinking her coffee like that. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. So Lexa then says that Bailey bullied her in NXT, and now she's pretending to be a nice person, even though she was a hugger in NXT. Yeah, uh, she's literally the same person. Like, are the writers? Did, whoever wrote this segment, do they not even know that Bailey was the hugger in NXT? They've probably never seen it in yeah. NXT. What the fuck? So Bailey tells Alexa, you can't handle the truth. So we have a, uh, what the fuck was that movie? A Few Good Men. A Few Good Men reference from 25 years ago. Roughly. All right. She says, you're not a goddess. You're an entitled little princess who's not as good as you think you are. Hmm. Alexa tells Bailey, you peaked at NXT. So Bailey attacks her. Nikki pulls Bailey off and yells at her. And then Alexa hits Bailey with a cheap shot. And Nikki looks horrified. Right. Nikki Cross. Yeah. The crazy one. Captain Crazy. Captain Crazy. She's like, oh, no. Oh, my God. You hit her. Why'd you do that? 
She wasn't even really paying attention. I mean, she was trying to fight you. She's like uh, Will Ferrell and Ladies Man. That is not wrestling. <laughs> you yeah. don't throw punches. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's a good reference. Yeah. So uh, backstage, Zelina Vega is fixing her hair. I feel like you should... Nab that sound. <laughs> <laughs> that is not wrestling. <laughs> Every time Roman does a Superman punch, that is not wrestling. I have enough clips as it is. Oh, we need so know. much. Uh, maybe we can retire a couple. Well, I need a. I need my own. I need my <laughs> like own a soundboard. Soundboard. You do because I don't have enough room on the computer to play them off of, and it would be a lot better if I just had the fucking soundboard and yeah. it was on all the time. Yeah, that would be great. I have to look into that. Yeah, so uh, backstage, Alina Vega is fixing her hair when Apollo Crews walks up looking for Andrade. Now, while this happens, uh -huh. around the corner, you could see half of a person standing there. And I was like, oh, it'd be funny if that was Andrade and they just fucked up and right. like we saw him this whole time. But I guess it's probably just someone hanging out backstage. So Zelina asks Cruz, you know, are you looking for Andrade? You're just trying to flirt with me. And then she touches his chest and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But then Andrade turns out that was Andrade <laughs> hiding there. Hiding. And he attacks Cruz from behind and lays him out. Horrible blocking. Yeah. You see him the whole time. Right. And then Chad Gable shows up and he's taking notes again while like smirking at Apollo Cruz. What isn't, the fuck is going on? that who he smirked at last time? Yeah. So he has a thing for Apollo. He does. <laughs> Maybe he's going to ask him, like, hey, uh, could you hook me up with Titus Worldwide? Is you want to go to this, the summer formal? <laughs> <laughs> so next up, we have Heavy Machinery versus the B Team with Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan on commentary. Uh, you know, Otis and Tucker get the easy win. Yeah. After the match, Seth Rollins shows up with a chair and takes out Bo and Axel. Five. So Seth Rollins finally showed up on SmackDown. Yes. To beat up the B team. <laughs> yes. We were just saying he's never been on SmackDown. Yeah. Recently. Right. Like any time recently. And he finally shows up, and it's to hit the B team with a chair. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. Gages. So outside, I, would, if you're Seth Rollins, wouldn't you want Bo Dallas to be the special referee? Yeah. Someone you could easily beat up. <laughs> yeah. All right, it. he's gone. Get get another ref out here. Right. Yeah. So outside the arena, Shane McMahon arrives in a limo when Kevin Owens and Sammy show up to complain about Seth Rollins and Kofi Kingston. So Shane makes a tag team match. He, he might as, He's stealing uh, Teddy Long's gimmick. He is. He's going to be known for tag matches. I know. This is all he does. Well, I mean, as long as it's not the same thing it was on Raw, I mean, it's fine. Uh, so it's Kevin Owens and Sammy versus Seth and Kofi in a two out of three falls match. What the actual shit? I mean, what's the what? what is going on? Right. Is it for tag titles? No. No. If Sammy and Kevin win, do they win the Universal and I WWE just, this title? Is the, this is always the most evil thing Shane can think of. Tag matches. Shane's like, hey, Roman, I hate you, Roman. You beat up my father, Roman. You know what I'm going to do to you, Roman? Tonight, you're going to be in a tag match. Oh, no! What? 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 And, and it's going to be against my guy who you've beat plenty, <laughs> and then my other guy that you've beat like three times as much as yeah. him. Oh, uh, and then Kevin Owens and Sammy come. Hey, Seth and Kofi are a bunch of assholes. Shane's like, you're right. We're going to punish those two guys. Yeah. They're going to have a tag match against you guys. Against you. Two out of three falls. Yeah. I mean, I know that you were on the team that lost last night. Yeah. And you took two falls in a row. But, I mean, <laughs> lightning can't strike twice. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. And yikes. Yikes, God. Who did they lose to? Uh, uh, it was the New, New Day, Day, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Jesus. And I think uh, one of the pins was Kofi. Yeah. Um, so uh, next up, we have episode nine of Aleister Black's Open Door Challenge. <laughs> oh, boy. Blah, blah, blah. Pick a fight with me. Mm -hmm. I swear, someone needs to listen to this podcast so they could steal your idea. And have, the RKO and have out of Orton RKO him. Yeah, right. If that happens, I'm pulling that clip and posting it everywhere. 
Yeah. <laughs> Please. And tag Randy Orton. Yeah. He might And like it. like we'll apply for because you know they're they're hiring new writers again or they're looking for new writers again. Yeah. Like we'll like uh, we'll do like an official application and it's like, oh, can you post some of your uh you know demo work or like where you've written before? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, we've written for your your show before. Yes. And then we just post the clip, <laughs> the clip. for dated yeah. weeks ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they should do RKO out of nowhere. While was and doing and then problem. also the clip of when I said, watch, it's going to be Demon Balor versus Lashley at WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We that like, was in January. We have like probably 50 clips of us. Yeah. We'll just put them on. They'll be like, you're hired. <laughs> Come write some good shit. No, like, wait. No, we want to write good shit, not good shit. Exactly. Yeah. So next up, we have Shane, Elias, and Drew McIntyre come out to the ring. Wild card! Six. McIntyre starts cutting a promo on Roman when he's interrupted by The Miz. Wild card! Seven. Seven. Miz tosses the Titan Tron, and we watch Roman beat up the Revival, McIntyre, and then like a, a super slow motion of... Him spearing Shane on Raw. What? No, sorry. And, and Miz is like, oh, it. Miz thinks it's funny. Shane's like, oh, if the production truck plays that shit again, they're all fucking fired. Yeah. And uh-huh. Kevin, Kevin Dunn's like, even me? And they're like, yes, especially even you. Especially you. Especially you. <laughs> Miz says he blames himself for Shane becoming the best in the world because, you know, he's, he's the one that got pushed injured out. and pushed out. Yeah. And he says he will end this. So Shane makes another tag team match. It's McIntyre and Elias versus The Miz and a partner of his choosing as long as his partner shows up in the next 10 seconds. Mm. Luckily, our truth randomly appears ringside. Like, I don't even... Where was he? Was he under the ring? He was uh, under the announce table, I think. <laughs> Tying then, Corey Graves' shoes. And then Miz says, Awesome, truth is back. And everyone's like, No one asked. And everyone's like, what is that? <laughs> oh, those are the two guys that jobbed to Cena and The Rock yeah. on that shitty pay-per-view. Yeah. You know what the tagline for that was? Huh? Because they were tagging together. Never before, never again. <laughs> Fuck. For good reasons. Yeah. They're like, we need like two humongous jobbers to just instantly job to Cena yeah. and The Rock. Uh, do we, uh, that's, where that, that's where that one thing of Cena going... My partner is the rock. And that spit came out of his mouth and like hung on his chin. <laughs> uh, so next up, we go back. My backst- partner is my wife. My wife. <laughs> next up, we go backstage and AOP walks out of Corbin's locker room. And there's two of them. Nine. And so now I finally realize why... Uh, What's his name? Um, Akam? Ellering. Paul Ellering? Paul Ellering would always talk for them. Yeah. Because apparently Akam inhaled helium? Yeah. (laughs) He inhaled helium, and he's like, Well, well, um, on the NXT podcast back in the day, Josh and I would always joke that Paul Ellering's their manager because, you know, he has the book of pain and he reads it to them because they can't read. Yeah. He's exactly. like, all right, chapter two. <laughs> and they just sit there. But like, it was a cold morning. Of all the people, of all the wild cards. Of all the wild cards. AOP, who hasn't had a match in six months. Yeah. They were on SmackDown to come out of a door. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like. I think that went well. Yeah, I think that went very well. I what, are, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> what are they both going to be the ref? Yes. In one big shirt? <laughs> <laughs> what the but, fuck? Yes, please. What the fuck? Can, I, can we have that? Yeah, please. Right. Seriously. Like, how does that phone like? AOP. Uh, yeah, uh, Acom Racer. Uh, we need you guys. Uh, we need you at SmackDown ASAP. Uh, wild card, whatever. But you need to be there. Okay, okay yeah, we'll see. Okay, we got <sighs> here as quick as, quick as we could. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. All right. <laughs> Here's the scene. Baron Corbin has an office with a door. He's not here, though. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Walk out of it. Okay, and then, like, we go to our match. 
no. <laughs> uh, you're going to walk out. You're going to both say, I think that went well. Yeah. Because you're two monsters, but uh-huh. you want to be the special referee to be Baron Corbin's bitch. Yeah. And then uh, you're going to, then the Iconics are going to show up and, you, and you're just going to look at them for a second and then walk away. Like, is that a <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So the Iconics, the, yeah, they see AOP and they're like, oh, that's impressive. Like, what's impressive? What? The fact that they've got nothing? Yeah. No manager? Right. No titles? No book of pain? No book of pain. So then the Iconics bump into the Bukaki Warriors. <laughs> hey, they're back! With Paige. Uh-huh, Paige, yeah. Paige, yeah. The Iconics laugh at the Japanese girls, I guess. Because they're <laughs> yeah. Japanese. Because they know look why. different than them. Yeah. And Paige says, how about we challenge you for those titles? And, of course, Billy and Peyton aren't interested, but Paige says she asked and she received a tag team match that will take place next week in Tokyo. And if they win, they'll get a title match, and it'll be iconic. Beat the champs to get a shot at the champs. Yeah. It doesn't count if it's in Tokyo. It's true. That's why Triple H is joining the club. Yeah. Because what happens in Tokyo stays in Tokyo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll never see that shit again. Yeah. So next up, we have Drew McIntyre and Elias versus Awesome Miz, I guess. Oh, it's an Awesome it's, Truth. Awesome Truth. Sorry. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome I Miz. wrote Awesome Miz. <laughs> the truthing Miz. Awesome. Awesome Miz. Truth's like, what about me? <laughs> um, it's uh, and it's a, it's an elimination tag team match. Why? <laughs> so Truth can get pinned. So Elias eliminates R Truth with a big knee in the corner. And I'll do this for Joe. And no! No, 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 no. He pinned R Truth. He, w- he was in a sanctioned match, so the 24 7 title is currently on hold. So the 24 7 title could only be defended in a non sanctioned match? It can't be defended while you're in a sanctioned match. In a different sanctioned match. Yeah, correct. Unless someone just says you can. Y- correct. <laughs> the, <laughs> God, I hate this so much. I know. Uh, so Elias eliminates our truth Then Shelton Benjamin, the Singh brothers, Matt Hardy, which is just offensive. That he's chasing after this shit. Right. Brian Kendrick and Jack Gallagher run out. When's the last time we've seen Gallagher on the main roster? Seriously. Well, what's more offensive is, do you remember the original Jumanji movie? Yeah. With Robin Williams? Jack Gallagher. <laughs> he looks like that guy? No, 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 no. Uh, There's like the herd of rhinos that goes through. Yeah. And then there's the one little rhino at the end. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was Matt Hardy. <laughs> yeah. It was like the, the running jobbers. Oh, and the running of the jobbers, and then here's Matt Hardy like, eh, 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 well, yeah. Eh. So, so Shelton grabs the twenty four seven title, and the other jobbers chase him around the ring. And like you said, Matt's in the back, and Matt's so slow that Shelton almost laps Matt Hardy. Yes, like you know, like, right? Matt, right. just turn around. Yeah, <laughs> and like Matt's running like, eh, thanks for getting injured, Jeff. You fuck face. Yeah, look at what I've become. I'm not broken. Matt's probably like. Fuck, I wish we would have signed a two-year deal. Right. Because we could be with AEW we right now. We could have gone to AEW. Jesus. Oh, that's Lord. awful. Yeah. So uh, Shelton grabs a title, but a ref tells him that's not how you win the title, you fucking idiot. You can't just grab that's, it. That's f- what the ref said. What the fuck? Did Mick Foley call and be like, scramble again? <laughs> like, yes. They should do that. Like once a month. Yeah. Foley just appears on the Titan Tron. And, right. and he does he just says one word. He just goes, scramble! And they're like, what the fuck does that mean? And then you just have to grab it. Yeah, you have to grab it. <laughs> so uh, R-Truth grabs the title back from Shelton and he runs away. Mm. Uh, Miz was beating up Elias, but McIntyre headbutted Miz outside the ring. He tags himself in and he beats Miz with a Claymore. Yeah. After the match, McIntyre gives Miz another Claymore. Uh-huh. And then he gives the Miz... Uh, a third Claymore. Okay! 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 Proving that Miz cannot win shit. I mean, holy as a crap. face. When he's never going to win again until he turns heel. He's one of the best intercontinental champions of all time. All time. 
when they won the tag titles, did Miz get the pin or did Shane? Hmm. I don't remember. It's a good question. Because it's like, did Miz even get that win, technically? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, probably not. Nah. I think it was a Shane coast to coast. Yeah. Yeah. But what what the fuck are they doing with the Miz? I just don't understand. Right. Like, my God, it's awful. So backstage, Ember Moon asked Carmella if she's seen Mandy and Sonia, but Carmella asked Ember if she's seen our truth, but yeah. no and no. So Ember walks two feet and then spots Mandy and Sonia. She's like, there you she are. She walks two feet, spots Mandy and Sonia seven inches away. Yeah. <laughs> like, someone did not plan this backstage segment very well. Do what you did earlier when we were watching this. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, no, just like do it here. Like, look the other way. Oh, yeah, it's like, hey, have you seen Andrew? No? All right, I'm going to keep looking for him. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it was... no, it's not even like that. It's like, it's like, no. Yeah. hey, have you seen Andrew? <laughs> no? All right. There you <laughs> Like, she's like a fucking horse with yeah. blinders. She, yeah, like, it's true. She was looking in the same direction the whole time. She was straight ahead. So, two more feet, then you yeah, can spot like, him? It, it almost needs like a Shawn Michaels. Oh, God. Recreate, recreation. <laughs> oh, God. Like, if you're watching on video, she's like, Have you seen Mandy and Sonia? No? Okay. There you are. <laughs> No, it's like, watch, it's like, it's like, uh, hold on, hold on, like the Met guy. Uh, hey, uh, Todd Frazier, have you seen Macho Man? No, you haven't seen him? Uh, I guess I'll keep looking. Hey, Macho Man, there you are. <laughs> Basically, that's it. I mean, Macho Man! God. So anyways, Ember walks up to them. They make fun of her. She knocks the donuts that they're eating out of their hands. Uh and she attacks them until a referee separates them. Right. And Sonia's like really pissed off. She's like breathing heavy and everything. Oh, yeah. And then for some reason, Mandy gives Sonia the fuck me eyes. Like, like she looks at her like, oh, just wait till we I don't think get... I've ever been looked at like that. Yeah. <laughs> ever. Mandy's like, just wait till we get home. Right. My <laughs> God. I mean, I've looked at a pizza like that, but. Yeah. I think Jesus. Sonia's finally going to get her, uh, her dream come true. Right. Seriously. <laughs> She's gonna call up Mandy. She's gonna call up Seth's ex girlfriend. And be like, "Yeah, we're we're done. We're done uh, here. Uh, I got Mandy. She converted. Yeah. It's confirmed. <laughs> I got the two point conversion. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. I uh, found my unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Have a nice life. <laughs> Get your shit out of my house. Get the fuck out, you Nazi. <laughs> Remember she got in trouble for like the Nazi shit? Yeah. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. Good lord. Um <laughs> So outside the arena, that's yeah, that's so true. Like Seth and Sonia are Eskimo brothers slash sisters, whatever they, that is. They are. <laughs> that, wow. I wonder if uh, he was at SmackDown. I wonder if they ever talk about that. They probably just like whenever they see each other, they just like, you know, like, yeah, they yeah. just like too sweet each other. <laughs> <laughs> These these are the like, fingers we use. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're like this. Yeah. Hey, uh, does she taste how I remember? Oh, hey, Becky, what's going on? Hey, hey. Oh my hey, the man. God. Yeah, you're the man you're in this man. relationship. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Can't wait to go home and you fuck me with your man cock. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. So, anyways, <laughs> we go outside the arena. Our truth is heading for the car, and he's yelling at Carmella, "Let's go, let's go." We see a a short blonde girl from far away, and it's like a it's like an instant repeat, yeah, of what we just saw with Ember Moon and Mandy, right? Where he's like, "Where's Carmella? <laughs> Carmella? <laughs> Carmella? <laughs> Carmella?" And he walks right by her. <laughs> oh, there you are, bitch! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yelling your. And he doesn't realize it till he like turns around yeah. and he's three feet away from her. Like, right. oh, there you are. Yeah. I walked right by you for 10 minutes. So the car pulls up. He opens the door and a ref comes out. And Truth says, you do, good driver. <laughs> uh, but then he turns around 
Carmella's wig comes off because it's Drake Maverick with fake tits. Yes. Uh, Drake rolls up truth, and he finally wins the 24-7 title. And then he drives away yelling, I'm getting married, and I'm the 24-7 champ. And then Truth says, Carmella's getting married? So Truth still thinks it's Carmella, even though... (laughs) Even though Drake Maverick's fake tits fell out of his shirt, and our truth is basically sitting on them. Anatomically correct <laughs> fake tits. There's no way these fake tits were supposed to be seen on TV. Like, For, first they were not all, supposed to fall out of his shirt because they had nipples <laughs> and areolas. And areolas. Like, they looked real. Right. He's like, I'm a method actor. I'm going to play the fuck. Like, oranges were not good enough. Why? Yeah. Like, just put some balloons in there. Right. Like, uh, sorry, I couldn't find you. uh, I couldn't find you oranges, but I found these anatomically correct prosthesis. Yeah. Where did they get that from? (laughs) They went to, like, the adult store? Yes. Like, I'm all for this because it was fucking hilarious, but, like, you know it was an accident because it's the PG era. Like, that right. was not supposed to be on TV. Well, you know, in the beginning of the show, Big hilarious. E said that, uh, like, the last <laughs> hour is going to be the nasty hour or the freak hour, <laughs> yeah. and it sure as shit was. Wow. Truth's just, like, sitting there and two fake tits with nipples and aerial, or aerial. Oh, it was hilarious. Yeah. It was fucking great. Oh, so, my God. But after all that, he still thinks it's Carmella. Yeah. So he thinks, so now they're going to do the truth thinks Carmella is a 24 7 champion. So when he sees her next week, he's going to be like, Why'd you take my title from me? He's going to immediately try to pin her. Yeah. And she's like, What are you doing, truth? Stop it. And he's like, I know about those fake tits. And he just grabs her tits. He tries to yell. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Trying to pull them off. He tries to pull off her tits. She's like, No, truth, they are fake, but not. they don't just come off. And then Corey's like, Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Corey's on commentary. He's like, what the fuck is going on? I knew I didn't trust him. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. Funny segment, though. Yeah. So for the main event, we have Seth and Kofi versus KO and Sammy. Two out of three falls. And just like... Again. Just... Again. Again. Just like Raw... The good guys sweep both. <laughs> they sweep it. Sweep it. Kofi hits Sammy with Treble in Paradise five seconds into the match to get the first fall. And then in the end, Seth Curb stomped KO for the win. Yeah. Sweep it. Sweep it. Sweep it. So that was Raw and SmackDown. Uh, again, I think like Raw was a decent show. But again, SmackDown was just like another carbon cop, like carbon copy. Like, yeah. Corbin's looking for a ref, even though he's right. not there. And then more tag team matches with the same people, pretty much. It's just, yeah. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. So let's get to awards. All right. Let's do it. All right. Who'd you have for worst dressed? Oh, let's see. My worst dress was Carmella as Charlie Chaplin. Oh, my God. Yikes. I had Ember Moon. She had like a uh, like a dead squirrel on her shoulder. Oh yeah, yeah, or something. I saw, I saw that. that she had like a dead animal on her shoulder. Yeah, what the is that? What the war goddess does? Maybe that's uh, the remains of a uh, rambling rabbit. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. Best dressed, uh, Bailey in street clothes. Really, 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 really. Uh, I at first I had Lacey Evans in her slutty outfit on Raw, right? Because um, she did look good and she was super slutty. But again, when Alexa Bliss wears ring gear, uh, something happens. Yeah, I think we belong together. You know, I like short girls. She's like five feet tall. Mm-hmm. You know, she's pretty and yeah. I you know I can get over the I'll get her coffee every morning. Shoot your shot, man. Yeah, I'll get her coffee. Hey Alexa, I'll get you all the coffee you want. All those beans. Probably <laughs> all those. What? All the um, beans. Yeah, worst acting. Uh, I had Ember Moon. Yeah. Where are they? There you are. There you are. It's I, like you have one eye closed. Where are they? Uh, there you are. Mm-hmm. Switch eyes. I had your best dressed. I had Bailey. Oh, okay. You know. It's I don't blame me. It's Bailey. It's Bailey. What? I, your coffee? Uh, best acting? You know, I had Dolph Ziggler this week. 
Yeah. I thought he was good. Really? And plus, you know, he was really good in the match with Xavier. I had Seth freaking Rollins. I liked him with the chair. Chair Rollins? Yeah. Chair Rollins. Seth Chair and Rollins? Yes. Right. Worst comments? Uh, kick ass and take names. Stomping ground. Stomping grounds, kick ass and take names. Yeah, stomping grounds, kick there was, ass. There was a promo that Tom Phillips did on SmackDown. Uh-huh. He started. He's like, stomping grounds, kick ass, take names. You're gonna have Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin, Kofi Kingston versus Dolph Ziggler, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Stomping grounds, kick ass, take names. Kick ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he said it twice. Right. Like, um, come on. Like, it's yeah. not that kick ass. It's it's gonna be the opposite of kick ass. Yeah, what, what the is show that? is gonna suck ass. Ass kick, suck ass. Yeah. It's gonna suck ass. Best comment. Uh, Thanks a lot, Bob. Sweep it, sweep it. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Worst match. Uh, the women's tag title match. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I agree. Slow mo. Uh, Miz and Truth versus Elias and Drew. Oh yeah, yeah. That lasted two commercial breaks. <laughs> Why? Yeah. Best match? Um, I'm going to go with Dolph versus Woods. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. There were two pretty good matches this week. That one, I had Rollins and Bryan. Right. Worst move? Uh, worst move? Um, there wasn't anything that really like stood out for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess if I had to go with something, uh, I would say the... McIntyre going through the table in the VIP party uh-huh. from Roman. It's just not good to waste food. Is that why? I'm well, no. Like, it was <laughs> just like it had like a very fancy tablecloth, but then they used like the cheapest yeah. table they could find. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It just It didn't look like a good table spot. I'll, I'll do uh, Billy Kay rolling up Nikki okay. for the win because Billy Kay should never be rolling up Nikki. Right. Best move? Uh, the neutralizer on Strowman. Oh, yeah. That was good. Yeah. That was good. I had Dolph super kick to Woods. All right. Worst moment? Uh, Cole narrating the backstage segment. That was uh, that was really bad. God. Yeah. So many choices. Razor, Akam's voice. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> um, let's, I'll, let me go with the donuts. Ember Moon. Donuts. With the Mandy and Sonia and the donuts and what the because fuck is that? Because Ember Moon wasn't there for donuts. She was there to go nuts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Best moment? Uh, fake tits by <laughs> far. <laughs> fake God. tits on the ground. Oh, man. How do you beat that? You don't. I originally had the opening segment of Raw because it was fuck done. that. It was done so well, but fake tits. Tits. <laughs> yeah. With nipples. With nipples and areolas. And areolas. And mm. there was even hair on those areolas. Yikes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's all for awards. Now we can get to some breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> so Impact Wrestling has officially released Scarlet Bord- Bordeaux. Boudreaux. Oh, is that it? Really? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I think it's Bordeaux. Bordeaux. Yeah. Scarlet Bordeaux after criticism. That the company doesn't even pay her enough to make a living. Apparently, she had it. She has a second job. Oh yeah, that's how bad it is. Oh jeez. Um, but she's the one that when she showed up to Impact, she was. She said, "I'm going to make wrestling sexy again," and then she deep throated the microphone. Right. <laughs> no, she gave it like a big lick. She was like, "I'm going to make wrestling sexy that. again." Yeah. Like, and it's you're like, like oh, make it porn. Do you know how fucking gross a microphone is? Yeah. Like, I doubt they got you a new microphone. Right. There's like a hundred pe- like different like people spit on that microphone. Yeah. So to lick a microphone is just disgusting. Um, but you know, she had to do it. She did. She was also before that, she jobbed Nia Jax on Raw. Um, it was like when Nia Jax first got to Raw and they were just feeding her jobbers. Like they do with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. She was one of the jobbers and uh, I think it was when Sasha was feuding with Naya and Scarlett had like a, a boss shirt on and she goes she's like Sasha's my favorite wrestler like what growing up like you, yeah right what, what, what? like you look two years older than her <laughs> yeah, exactly like what is that yeah um, but she was also grabbed by a fan at a triple A show um, 
earlier this week or last like, week or whatever. The in guy Mexico. like put his arms around her waist. <laughs> he tried to like pull her and like pick her up, and I guess she didn't realize it was in like the heat of the moment. Yeah, and it's crazy. Yeah, like that's. I'm sorry. That's a huge no, no. That was that was disturbing. <laughs> right. He's lucky. That guy's lucky. He didn't get the shit beat out of him. Oh yeah. He's like, she's mine. I got her. I won. Yeah, I won. <laughs> this is the best show ever. Yeah, yeah. but uh, maybe she'll show up again. She's not really known as a great wrestler or anything. No. She's more like a Stacy Keebler or Sonny or something like that. Right, but we'll right, see. Right. We'll see if she shows up to Raw. I mean, Vince loves hot chicks who can't wrestle. Yeah. That's half of the women roster on, on in WWE. <laughs> um, I mean, Billy Kane, Peyton Royce. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, so this one's really weird. Uh-huh. Uh, WWE released an announcement over this. Apparently, Harvard Business School is going to be offering a course featuring WWE, a case study on WWE in the fall. The prestigious Harvard Business School is offering a case study on WWE um, as part of the business of entertainment, media, and sports beginning this fall. The course will enroll 180 students in their second year and will also examine other major sports and entertainment brands like Walt Disney, NBC. Okay, so it's not just WWE. Right. But that's still but kind still. of funny, especially when they're doing so poorly. In the ratings. Yeah. Like, how to run a failing wrestling business. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I thought that was just kind of funny that this is going to be a course. It's like, okay, so like, I want you to write an essay on stomping grounds. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, well, Dolph Ziggler fought Kofi, and Kofi won in the cage. And then uh, Brock Lesnar came out with the briefcase. Uh, yeah, that's. Do you have any news? Yeah. Uh, so during a taping of main event, uh, Dana Brooke took a flying knee from Sarah Logan mm. and was busted open. Ouch. Um, and X was blood everywhere. Up, yeah, she was covered in blood. Covered basically, in blood. Jesus. Uh, an X was sewn up by the ref, and the match was stopped. Um, I guess a rumor part of it is she may have suffered a broken orbital socket. Ouch. Yeah, so but that was also um, Sarah Logan's re debut or repackaging on main event on main event as a Viking. Oh. Apparently, that's what she said. She's a Viking, so she's doing her husband's gimmick, right. but she's not a Viking Raider. But she's, she's so she's a Viking, but she's not a part of the Viking Raiders, yeah, but she's still a Viking, right? We'll never see her, we'll never see, yeah. Unless you watch main event, you'll see her. Uh, right. Matt Hardy's wife, Rebby Sky, took to Instagram and announced that they are pregnant again with number three. Wow. And no word yet on if it is a boy or a girl. It's always great when nice things happen to horrible people. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> well, no, but you you heard about what uh, what's her what's her name? Rebby 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 Sky uh -uh. said about. Um, um, What's her name? The one that died, Ashley. No, Ashley Massaro. Uh uh She so like when that when she died and it came out, uh, Rebby Sky tweeted like like a laughing emoji or something because she date Ashley Massaro dated for Matt apparently for a little bit. Yeah. So she tweeted a laugh emoji and the people were like, "Wow, that's fucked up. Like, how could you do that?" And then um, Rebby Sky claimed that she was she was reacting to like The Bachelor or some bullshit. Um, and then people are still like giving her like crap about it. And she was like, you know, uh, oh, people think I'm tweeting about someone I don't give a shit about. Oh my <laughs> it's god! Like, wow, Jesus, the person's dead. Not making it any like you hate her just because she's an ex right. of your husband. It's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anything else? Yeah, this is uh, not WWE related. Um, so 66 years after Fritz von Erich. Uh, which is the Von Eric dad, uh, made his New York debut. His grandsons will wrestle in the Big Apple for the first time ever as the Von Eric boys usher in a new era. That's cool. Uh, they'll be wrestling for Major League Wrestling. Mm. And uh, they're Ross and Marshall Von Eric. And they're the sons of... Um, well, the only one that's still alive. Yeah, right? the only one that's left. But I remember in, the, in that 
Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah. Yeah, they showed them wrestling. Like, they yeah. were practicing. But right. like in that, you didn't know if they were like... Kevin Von Erich. Kevin. Yeah, you didn't know if they were serious or if it was like just for the documentary, but right. I guess they are. But so yeah, they're going to uh, make their debut. That's, cool. that's the promotion that Jim Cornette's a part of. Yeah. Tickets start at $20. Keep that in mind. Each ticket, $20. Yeah? Yeah. What, what, what's, what's significant about that? Well, let's go into rumors. Oh, um, okay. All right. <laughs> rumors! Kevin Owens wins back the Universal title? Maybe! Balor Club to finally get a second member? Too sweet! Brock Lesnar willingly works a full schedule? No chance! Next year's WrestleMania will be in Saudi Arabia? Confirmed! According to Dave Meltzer... WWE is offering two for one tickets for stomping grounds due to the due to the low ticket sales. So you can get two tickets <laughs> for twenty dollars. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Um, man, I, I meant to uh, pull this up sooner. Well, I want to actually pull up like Ticketmaster. No, I did today. I did today. Oh, you did. And it's still wide open like it's crazy. Like the floor is just fucking it's empty. Jesus. That's why they're doing two for one. Yeah. And two for one on the floor. On that the floor. That probably is not even enough. Like they're going to be no. giving out f- just free tickets. Like everyone like just around the city. Just here you go, here you go. Yeah. Take some tickets like what WCW had to do back in the and day. And it's in Tacoma. Yeah. I mean, that's like you'd think they would m- give Daniel Bryan a huge match. Right. To try to sell tickets. And they Daniel Bryan's in a match. They they only added it tonight on SmackDown. Yeah. And again, it's a tag team match. So it's like whatever. Good lord. Yeah, like everything's a, like that's not like sold. There's just that's everything that's taped well, yeah, off. That's all taped off. That's all blocked off. That's all blocked off. <laughs> that's yeah. blocked off. Right. It's crazy. Like all right. It's so like the, half the arena's blocked off. Right. So this place goes from section one oh two to one twenty. And let's see, there is one, two, three, four, five sections open with tickets. Yeah. My God. It's bad. That's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dave Meltzer is also claiming that WWE is currently trying to win an Emmy. Yeah. So they're campaigning to try to win an Emmy when the show is nev- has never been worse. <laughs> and the ratings have never been worse. And they're trying to win a fucking Emmy for like unscript... I forget exactly what the what the exact award they were going for was, but like some unscripted bullshit, even though it's totally scripted. Right. I think it's like in reality show or like, I don't know. I forget, but they're trying to win an Emmy. That's so Good dumb. luck with that. Yeah. Should have tried that uh, 20 years ago. Right. <laughs> yeah. You still wouldn't have won an Emmy. No. But still, for your consideration, here's Stone Cold versus The Rock. Yeah, right. Did you see... The okay, so now the MT the MTV movie awards is now the MTV movie and TV and awards. TV, yeah. And did you see uh Best Fight? Uh Becky Lynch versus Charlotte versus Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania was one of the nominees for Best Fight. Really? Yes. And Becky and Rollins went to the show. Oh yeah, I saw just that. Just in case they won. Yeah. Like, I would... That wasn't the best match at WrestleMania. No. That wasn't the best match that the women had. like Of the year. But again, because it's WrestleMania, because of the main event, because it's Ronda Rousey. They did that, but the fact, like, it just shows the fu- these fucking award shows are horseshit. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, WWE just pays MTV to put them like, in a you're fucking telling award me category. That this choreographed fight for re- pro wrestling. Yeah. Is one of the top five out of every fight scene in every TV show <laughs> or in every movie <laughs> yes. for the past year? <laughs> yes. Yes. Was was Endgame a bit available to be nominated? I, I have no idea. I didn't watch it. I just I just saw that. Because they didn't win though. <laughs> right. Obviously. 
Vince because... is like, this is, I paid to win. <laughs> yeah. That was good shit. It's like uh, Mr. Burns. When he's get like, me Carson Daly. I yeah. don't think he works there. I said get me Carson Daly. It's like Daly. Mr. Burns when he's like, I have to win this. I paid off everyone in Hollywood. <laughs> yes, right. Oh, my uh, God. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Fucking trying to win an award for best fight. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. Also, uh, apparently Lars Sullivan has a knee injury, mm. which is why he wasn't on Raw or SmackDown. And no one missed him. And no one missed him. Yeah. Uh, but it's unknown how long he'll be out for. It's rumored that it could be a lot more serious than previously thought. Well, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Pro Wrestling Sheet is reporting that Mike and Maria Kanellis have re-signed with WWE for five years. Five years. So fun info on that. When their contracts are up, uh, they will be 39 and 42. (laughs) Who's 42? That's a good question. I don't know if she's older or he's older. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Well, again, like, they're not... He, they're finally like, using them on 205 Live, I, well, I barely. hear. Barely. I mean, you'd figure like, yeah, I'll resign. You have a title match coming up. Put me in it. I think they just... I guess it just seems they like where they're at. Financial security. It could be. Maybe she wants to get pregnant again. If she can get pregnant again and then leave for a year and get paid. Yeah. That's, that's like... That's, that's awesome. Great. That's awesome. <laughs> I want to do that. Right? You want, you want me to get you pregnant? Yeah. All right. Oh, fuck. I don't have good enough <laughs> job security to do yeah. that. Shit. They're like, we, we're just going to sign these contracts, and I'll just keep blasting inside you. Yeah. You'll pop out babies. We don't even have to go to One work. One year. We don't even have to go to work. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll job all day. I don't know. But uh, all that trolling they did on you know Twitter and stuff, of like course. claiming they were going to leave and everything. Right. And, they're not going. I guess they're not going anywhere. Because when... when they signed him, and you know he showed up on Raw or SmackDown, where the fuck it was. They even the... moved Miz and Maurice to Raw, so there wasn't right a power couple on, like yeah. two power couples on one show. And we saw him wrestle for three weeks, uh huh. And he beat the same person, I believe. And then that was it. <laughs> and then he was gone forever. And then he randomly showed up on Two Hundred Five Live. He's to the greatest, greatest love ever. I remember because I had to do that. Um, because Edge and Christian had him on his podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I had to sing that song as Stone Cold, like, Here's to the greatest love I've ever known. Bah, 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 bah. You know, stupid yeah. shit like that. Right. And it was like, at the time, it was like, okay, this could be like like a mid-card guy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. from what we've been hearing, this could be a pretty big deal. And then we, <laughs> three weeks, never saw him again. Nope. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy how that works. Any other rumors? Nope. That's all I got. All right. Yeah. Uh, I don't think any of us have trivia, right? Nope. So then I guess we'll move on. Uh, what do you say we do some Jesse the Mind conspiracies? Oh, yeah. We can do that. Uh, yeah. Um, no. Oh, wait. Um, Jesse's w- not here. I do have some other information. What's that? I have some Stone Cold conspiracies. Stone Cold doesn't do conspiracies. I don't. I don't do conspiracies. Do you have some Jesse? Wait, these are Jesse conspiracies. Uh, I guess I'll read them and I'll tell you what. Tell you what I think. All right. Yeah. Want me to do that? Yeah. You. You should do that. You sure? Yeah. All right. Here we go. <coughs> All right. Here we go. Jesse conspiracies brought to you by Stone Cold Steve Austin. All right. Here we go. First one. Vince is a lizard person. What? <laughs> what in the hell is going on? I don't believe that for a damn second, Jesse. You're out of your mind on that one. Yeah. <clears throat> Although he, his skin is very leathery and... You know what? One time he did stick his tongue out. <laughs> All right, let's move on. <laughs> All right, number two. The fashion files are based on old episodes of Nash Bridges. <laughs> what? Stoko was on that show. I didn't see Tyler Breeze or Fandango. Dango. It's Fandango. I have the app. You want me to see the app? It's where I buy my movie tickets. He has his own app. Don't be a stupid son of a bitch. All right. He he beat Chris Jericho at WrestleMania. Yeah. And then he went on to be world champion. All right. Number three. Stone Cold's monster truck runs on biodiesel. What? 
What? The fuck does that even mean? I don't even understand that one. There's some there's some scratched out ones over here. The, the smoking skull title is now melted in the toilet seat at Vince's house. You mean to tell me the one I have at my home is is the fake one? It's, I think so. This is what Jesse's saying? Yeah, I think Vince turned it into a toilet seat. This is a bunch of bullshit. I'm going to have to track down Jesse and open up a can of whoop-ass. Yeah, that's all I got. (laughs) (laughs) That was on the fly. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Stone Cold reading Jesse's... Stone Cold conspiracies. Conspiracies. All right. All right. Um, What do we got now? Oh, should we do fan questions first? Yeah, we can do a couple. We're edging into a two-hour show. Holy shit. Yeah. All right, Marcus Munez, will the prediction title be defended for AEW shows? Well, NXT has its own. Yeah. So, so if we do AEW, it probably needs its own title. Yeah, I think so. We need more titles on this show. More titles. Just like Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. A Raw and SmackDown title. Yeah. Carol Johnson, you mentioned last year that Andrew would like to see Eric dressed up as Rey Mysterio. How do we make this happen? I don't remember this. I don't remember this either. I think maybe you. you I have said a Rey gonna... Mysterio mask. I think maybe that was. Well, it's it. like a bootleg one I got in Mexico. Yeah. Uh, Dan Delaney, will the WWE be stupid enough to make Corbin the special guest referee in his own match? Y- yes, that's not a bad that's idea. That's it. That's it. First, we want AOP in one single referee shirt, <laughs> and then we want Corbin. And then, if not that, we'll take Corbin. Yeah. Uh, Brian Brady, do you think it would be a good idea for Bray Wyatt to bring out the Fiend for big matches similar to the Demon for Balor? Uh, yeah. Well, what else? What is he going to wrestle in the sweater, though? Yeah, yeah, why not? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> or not just kind of like just as nice guy Bray or whatever. Yeah. Um, Kevin Key, what was more annoying, the crazy number of wild cards or the number... Of times heels tried to get heat by mentioning LeBron or the Lakers on Raw. I'm going to go with that. Yeah, uh, yeah it's true. Darth Hunter, uh, when will they finally get rid of the brand split so the wild cards will stop? I think they did well, this week. Yeah. See, that's the thing. I hit the wild card thing like 19 times a night. Yeah. So let us know. Do you like that still? Do you still think it's funny or is it played out? Yeah, we can I feel retire like, it. I feel like I pressed it too many times. Yeah, we can that's, add another one. That's WWE's fault. Yeah. Uh, Saad Baca uh, or Baxa, Pushfire Barry, Funniest Superstar, Biggie, The Rock, or Kevin Owens? Ooh, I think Push Biggie. Push Biggie over The Rock and Kevin Owens? Like in their prime? I don't it know. It doesn't the Rock say in is their pretty prime. Funny. Well, what, Rock right now? He's not a superstar. Oh, well, yeah. I don't know. I'd say the ro- push the Rock, Barry Owens. Fire Big E? Owens is fu- They're all funny. They are. Um, push Owens, Barry Big E, Fire the Rock. That's crazy. It is. You're crazy. You're crazy. So crazy. Kyle Gardner, do you think WWE should do a complete reset? Like strip all the championships, maybe merge the main championships minus the U.S. Intercontinental and have those titles for Raw and SmackDown. Have turn yeah, these all sounds great. Merge the ta- championships, have tournaments. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, who Philip Mason? Who do you think will be the next WWE star to jump to AEW, male or female? Whoever's contract is up next, right? Whoever doesn't re-sign next, yeah. I mean, we know how bad the Revival want to leave. Because, I mean, look, if anyone... They're not going to let anyone out of their contract. Right. Like, I think that's... So everyone's just going to have to wait it out. Yep. Mince, Vic Mann, Push Fireberry, Vince's Game of Thrones death. Uh, Triple H stabs Vince in the back to save the WWE universe because Vince is ordering jobbers to burn the arena to the ground. Push that. Uh, while taking a shit, Vince is shot with a crossbow crossbow by his own son, Hornswoggle. Push that, too. Push that. Uh, and then Becky Lynch locks Vince and the creative staff in a conference room, sets it on fire, and emerges unscathed uh, and nude as the new owner of WWE. Push that as Push well. Push that. Push all three of those. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I guess all this stuff happened on Game of Thrones. I think or so, similar. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel Ballin, Push Fire Barry, Bobby Lashley's sister's segment, Bailey, This Is Your Life, or Sami Zayn's electric chair. Are we pushing... Push the electric chair, just because 
the AEW fire Lashley, Barry Bailey. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they were all bad. Uh, let's see. Brian, question for Eric. Push fire Barry smoking with RVD, X Pac, and Matt Riddle. Smoking with RVD, X Pac, and Matt Riddle. Yeah. Uh, push Matt Riddle, Barry, RVD, fire X Pac. I knew you were going to fire X Pac. Of course. You hate him so I don't much. Want his dog staring at me. Uh, okay. Uh, I was mentally fucked by... I don't know. I cut off the rest of his name. Oh, Jesus. Top three fast food restaurant? Uh, Number one for me is Cane's. Uh-huh. What about you? Finish yours. Um, probably Chick-fil-A and Whataburger. Okay. Whataburger, Cane's, and then um, Sonic. Okay. Yeah. Good enough. Have tater tots. Tater tots. I love tater tots. Uh, lasagna enthusiasts, push fire berry brackets, movie recaps, old pay per view reviews. Push brackets. Push brackets. Um, berry old pay per view recaps. Fire, fire movie, movie recaps. recaps. Even though they're all great. They're all great. Content. But we just hate watching them. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're all terrible to watch. Yes. But our, our shows on them are always great. Yes. All right. All right, let's get a stomping ground recap. Stomping ground. Pr- pr- predictions. Predictions. All right, first off, we have the Cruiserweight Championship. That's still a thing. Uh, yeah. We have Tony Nese. Right. You heard of him? I have. He's the champ. He won at WrestleMania. Yes, he did. I'm and wear my belt. He's. Oh, my Freaking God. Block. Here he goes. He's putting on the belt. Yep. He's putting it on. I, mean, I can hold it like this the whole time. Hey, like. go for it. Good oh, luck no. holding up your arms. Right, yeah. All right, so we got Tony Nese versus Drew Gulak versus Akira Tozawa. All right, so I've got Nice with a pin. All right. I have Nice pinning Tozawa. I've got Nice pinning Gulak. Any outside interference? Uh, no. I have no it's as well. Threat. Next up, we have Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. I got Roman. Wait, so Roman could beat McIntyre but not Shane? Correct. I've got Roman as well yeah. with, a, with a pin. With a pin, yes, outside interference. Same here. That was a debatable lock of the century. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have Big E and Xavier Woods uh-huh. versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. This is a match that needed to happen. Because they didn't lose enough because, on Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. So I've got Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Oh, that's what I have as well. They have to finally get a fucking win, right? Yeah. Uh, with Owens pinning Woods. I have Sammy pinning Woods. Okay. Any outside interference? Uh, no. I have no as well. Yeah. SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan versus Heavy Machinery. I got Bryan and Eric Rowan. Same here. I have Rowan pinning Tucker. I've got Rowan pinning Dozovich. That's uh, not Otis. his name. It's, he doesn't have Otis. a last name anymore. Oh, that's right. No, you don't have to. I'm just kidding. I'm just okay. fucking, you don't have to change it. Otis. <laughs> Otis. Well, there's no asterisk. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Like Dominic Dijakovic? That's yeah. who he's pinning? Yeah. Uh, United States Championship, Samoa Joe uh-huh. versus Ricochet. I've got Samoa Joe submitting. Same here. True. Any outside interference? Uh, no. No. SmackDown Women's Championship, Bailey versus Alexa Bliss. I got Bailey with a pin. I have Bailey with a pin. Yes to outside interference. Same here. I think Nikki tries to help out, but she ruins, she fucks it up instead. Right. Uh, Ron Sma- oh, sorry, Raw Women's Championship, Becky versus Lacey Evans. Uh, I've got Becky with a pin. Yep. <coughs> I've got Becky with a pin. No outside interference. Yes, yeah, same here. God, this is this this is gonna come down to like come down to the tag team shit. Yeah. Like Sammy pins Woods or K- KO pins Woods. That's what this shit's gonna come down to. That's how bad this pay per view is. We all have the same shit. Yeah. Uh, WWE Championship Steel Cage Kofi versus Dolph. Um, I've got Kofi escaping. Okay, at least we're a little different there. I have Kofi pinning. Uh huh. And yes to interference. Yeah, they're both like those. Uh, Guys who do all the crazy shit at the Rumble, right. I have a feeling it'll be something like that. I hope so. That'd be nice. Yeah. You have no interference? Uh, I've got no interference. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, the Universal Championship, Seth Rollins versus Baron Corbin. Yeah. I've got Rollins with a pin. I have Seth Rollins with a pin. And then who is the special guest referee? 
I have Paul Heyman. Really? I feel like he's going to come out. Yeah. And say, of course my client isn't here. <laughs> Why would he come to this shit pay-per-view? With literally no one in attendance. That could happen just because I feel WWE in real life doesn't know if Brock's coming. Right. Like Vince is like, can you make it to Stumpy Grounds? And Brock's like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I want to do that. Right. So that could happen. But I have Brock. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Any spe- uh, surprise appearances? I've got no. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything either. Yeah. So we're tied at one point. Uh-huh. Uh, do you have the briefcase being cashed in? I don't. Same here. No for me. Uh, mm-hmm. Any announcer tables being broken? No. <laughs> it's like they've stopped doing that. Same here. I have nothing. God, this they've cost, sucks. They cost this cost. pay-per-view sucks, and this prediction sheet sucks. Uh, yeah. What's the opening match? Uh, U.S. title. Okay, at least we have that different. I have the SmackDown tag titles. Okay. And what's the main event? Uh, Rollins Corbin. Yep, that's what I have. And what's your lock of the century? Kofi winning. Same here. Oh, I fucking hate this. Oh, my God. This is bullshit. Yeah. At least I'll fucking win it, though. I'll, get, I'll beat you by two points. Right. Sure. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. All so, right. Uh, all right, then. That's it. That's the show. That's the show. Yep, time to go. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast. Give us a five-star review. Check out our website, what's wrong with wrestling.com. Like the show on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at wrong wrestling. And you, be- you can become a supporter of the show at patreon.com slash what's wrong with wrestling for the stomping grounds recap. If you want it. If you want it. Look, it's gonna suck. Yeah. So it should be a fun podcast. Right. Um, but you know, more so for our brackets, our yeah. Saudi Mania recap. Was hilarious. If, if you haven't joined Patreon yet, was amazing. At yeah. least I thought, and our fans thought. Yeah. So check it out. And uh, since Joe did it when I wasn't here, yeah, I'm gonna plug my own Instagram. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's E is the number four, and then awesome, and it's fun. I get so drunk it's, and it's, take it's funny E stories. is it's E is e the I, number four spelled out. Yes, the number <laughs> no, E I S four awesome. Okay. So give me a follow. I'm fun. Well, f- fine. Fuck I, Andrew Dot on Instagram. He never posts. Shut up. <laughs> Bye. I'm gonna take that from you. No. Hey, it's my shit. Just a troll. What's wrong with wrestling? What's wrong with wrestling? So much wrong with wrestling. Oh no. What's wrong with wrestling? What's wrong with wrestling? So much wrong with wrestling. Oh no. Ashley!